has everything riding on it. The first game had everything riding on it. This game is the added pressure. If we can go out and just play well and not worry about all the trash talk, then we can win national championships. Coach Mountain mentioned this, that they play to the echo of the whistle. If they're going to hit that to the whistle, we need to do that too. This game may be a different game if the rules are different. After our ball game with Florida, Steve said that we were dirty, I was dirty. Does that get on me? Not if I win. I was taught that really it's not the player's position to question the ref or anything about the types of play. That was always been the coach's position. I worry about what I have to worry about. Uh, intensity, war, all out. This is going to be a chance to go around and wear a ring and brag and say we number one. The national championship means everything. That's the best acceptance. Contrast between the event and the place. Some of the reminders of a gentler time still accent the facade of the city they call the Big Easy on the Big Muddy. It's a place for good food, good music, good time. Oh, New Orleans site of the Louisiana Superdome, where tonight two college football teams from Florida will play for the Division 1A championship. ABC Sports presents the Nokia Sugar Bowl, matching the number three Florida Gators and the number one Florida State Seminole. Hello again, everybody. Happy New Year. I'm Keith Jackson, and as they say in Acadiana, I am very happy for you to see me. The bottom line of this game that's about to take place tonight is this. The national championship is Florida State to lose because number two, Arizona State, fell yesterday in the Rose Bowl to Ohio State. If number three, Florida, should win the ball game, then there'll be five teams with one loss, and we'll have a great big argument. A lot of things have happened in the recent days, including some interesting rhetoric. John Saunders and Todd Blackledge will have some comments on that, among other things, from the Nokia Sugar Bowl in a moment. <laughs> The chores. The chores. Fresh air. Contact. Ford Explorer. It's at home, anywhere. Arm yourself with a new kind of deodorant protection. Arm & Hammer deodorant. The only one that absorbs and then eliminates odor with baking soda. This man used Arm & Hammer under his left arm and deodorant without baking soda under his right. After a full day's work, Odor detectors showed Arm & Hammer eliminated odor, while the side without baking soda simply covered it up. That's why we're confident it's a better kind of protection. So arm yourself with new Arm & Hammer deodorant, a better kind of deodorant protection. Hello from Plank Road, where a lot of you have been wondering how smooth is Ice House? So Paul and the guys thought they'd show you with this popular little demonstration. Oh, it makes them happy to show you things. And there you have it. Well, at least the ice house is smooth. Ice house. Never any watered down taste, so it always goes down smooth and easy. Thanks, and enjoy. Her career was in full swing, but a tragic accident shattered everything. See how she's defying the odds. Inside Edition. Tonight, following Nightline on 7. Welcome back, everyone, to the Ford Division pregame report, brought to you by Ford Division. Have you driven a Ford lately? An outside look at the Superdome here in New Orleans, just moments away from kicking off the Nokia Sugar Bowl. This is what's at stake. All eyes on this prize, the National Championship Trophy. John Saunders here alongside Todd Blackledge, who was the MVP of the 1983 Sugar Bowl. Now, this matchup is big enough, after all, the National Championship at stake. But it's even bigger because of the storied history of the coaches plus their rivalry. Well, and the controversy began when the teams first hit town. The verbal barbs going back and forth, and it all revolved around a videotape that Steve Spurrier put together 
have provided for us. And in this videotape, he thinks it proves that Florida State plays beyond the rules and tried to hurt his quarterback. Now, personally, I don't think Florida State teaches or plays dirty football. They are very aggressive. There were two roughing the passer penalties called in the game, and a couple more could have been. Steve's contention is if you watched Alabama the next week, their kids clearly pulled away from the quarterback when the ball was gone. Steve thinks this is the way you're supposed to play defensive football. There's a lot of t-shirts around town. Enough talk. It's time to play ball. It is indeed. But these coaches still had plenty to say about this controversy. Coach Mountain mentioned this, that they play to the echo of the whistle. You know, I was always taught you stop on the whistle. Uh, so if they're going to hit through the whistle and hit you right a little bit after the whistle, uh, we need to know that because uh, we, we need to do that too. After our ball game with Florida, Steve said that uh, we were dirty. I was dirty. Uh, Mickey Andrews, our defensive coordinator, were dirty. That uh, our kids hit late continually. And, uh, and then after the Alabama game, I think he repeated it. Uh, how does it affect the game? I don't think it'll affect it any. I spent some time with Steve Spurrier. He didn't tell me this, but my impression was perhaps he wanted the officials to be more aware of this. I think Johnny was trying to put a bug in the officials' ear and also indirectly challenge his football team to step it up physically. The last time these teams played, the Gators got pushed all over the field, and I talked to Steve yesterday on the practice field, and he told me he expected his team to show up tonight with a little nastier attitude, and I think he's saying, look, guys, this team, Florida State, will line up and smack you in the mouth. We have to be prepared to do the same thing. But the question is, what does this mean to Florida State? Could it backfire on Steve Spurrier? Well, it could. If I'm a Florida State player, I'm listening to all this, and I'm saying, hey, wait a minute, this coach and this team doesn't respect the fact that we have a good football team and we beat the Florida Gators. It's not going to slow me down. It's going to make me play harder. We'll hear plenty more from Steve Spurrier at halftime. We're just about ready for this one. It's going to be a terrific matchup. The last time number one was at stake, this time the national championship. The two seniors try to lead them. We'll come back with Dick and Bob after this. We are your children. Your boys. Your girls. Your sons and daughters. We are old friends. We are too fat. Can't do a pull-up. We smoke. We inhale. We drink. We are mothers. We are fathers. We are old friends. We have no place to play. We have no place to play. We want to be strong. We want you to come out and play. Teach us to hit. Teach us to grow. We are your children. We are you. We are you. We are you. Want whiter teeth in just two weeks? Then try Arm & Hammer Extra Whitening, the baking soda formula clinically proven to whiten teeth in two weeks. Arm & Hammer Extra Whitening, whiter teeth in just two weeks. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you want this? America's favorite fries, McDonald's. Go get them. But now you're using the wrong tool. Ford F Series with the world's only standard third door. And available new 5.4 liter Triton V8 for even more torque and horsepower. Now you got all your holes dug, huh? <laughs> the new Ford F Series. Built Ford Tough. pretty deep right now at the Superdome in New Orleans. As we continue those moments just before the Nokia Sugar Bowl game is about to be played, joining me now, Bob Greasy, who is also very happy for you to see him. I'm glad you get to see me. <laughs> <laughs> we are in a circumstance here, as we mentioned at the very beginning, where we'll have, if Florida should win tonight, five teams with one loss possibility of a split vote in the polls exists, though the Gators don't agree at Wait all. Wait a minute, Hoss. If the Gators win, they're going to be a hard time convincing them that they aren't number one, I guarantee right. you. <laughs> Absolutely. And they are convinced, I think, as they come in, that they can reverse it. Well, that's true. And the keys for tonight's game, for Florida, first of all, Keith, they first of all have got to protect Danny Werfel. They've got to do a better job than they did the last time. Werfel has led the nation in touchdown passes the last two years. This is the highest scoring offense in the country. He was sacked six times in the last game with Florida State. He was battered and bruised and mentally scarred. He gets two offensive linemen back for him. That'll help. 
The other thing for the Gators, they have to slow down, not stop. You got to slow down Warwick Dunn. Nobody can stop him. In the last game against this group, he rushed for 183 yards on the ground. He always shows up big in the big games, especially against the Gators. He's small, only 5'9", about 185 pounds. He can hurt you on the ground, and he can also hurt you catching balls out of the backfield. 183 yards on the ground, another four catches. He was over 200 yards through the air. The key is slowing him down, Keith. All right, now field position is, I think, going to be more an advantage for Thad Busby, maybe, in the kind of offense that he works in rather than well, Danny Werfel. You're right. If you talk about the keys for Florida State, if, if Dunn doesn't have the kind of day that you'd hope him to have, and I don't think he might have that kind of game, you got to have Thad Busby. He's got to step up and have a good game. He's been inconsistent this year. He's been hot and he's been cold. And as uh, Bobby Bowden, his coach, said, we don't ask him to necessarily win the game. Just don't lose the game for us. And I think he's going to have to step up and play. And if he doesn't, I think we might see Dan Kinder, the backup quarterback. The other thing that Florida State needs to do defensively, they need to dominate the line of scrimmage. Their defense needs to take this game over. They need to dominate. They're the best defensive line in the country. They led the nation in, in quarterback sacks with the 67 this year. They need to create some turnovers. They need to create good field position for the Florida State offense. We might tell you right now, though, that Peter Bolware and Daryl Bush are both suffering with uh, some symptoms of the blue. Right now, here come the Florida Gators out of Gainesville. The Southeastern Conference champions in 96, 11, and 1. They've won that championship for a full straight season. They're ranked number three in the National Bowl. Steve Spurrier, their coach in his seventh season. And now here comes the Seminoles, the number one team in the country. The Noles have won five straight ACC titles. Bobby Bowden in his 21st year. The Ford Division pregame report has been brought to you by the Ford F-150, strength after strength after strength, and Nike. Life is a lot like football. Guy gets stuffed on his piece, he's got to pop back up. Shake it off. Take this Fab kid. I don't know if he's the gutsiest quarterback in the league or just the best rolling nose tackle in the NFL. My point is this. When the clock finally runs out, it doesn't matter whether you got knocked down. What matters is whether you got back up. Could you top this off, please? What, am I talking to myself? This is for my grandfather, who always said I'd make the family proud. For my mom, who never left me out the door without my homework. For my dad, who worked the night shift to make our lives better. Glad you're up. Bye. I don't need For myself, for my future. Get a big screen TV at a price you won't lose any sleep over. Circuit City, you can't get a lower price. We guarantee it. November 30, 1997.
26, a grand day for the Seminoles. The day they beat the Gators and took first place in college football. Tonight, the rematch. And the national championship is the prize in the Nokia Sugar Bowl in New Orleans. Now, here is Lynn Swan with the coach of the top-ranked Florida State Seminoles, Bobby Bowden. Thank you very much, Keith. Coach Bowden, this is like a little series. It's part two. You got the same cast. Can you play the same kind of football game? Well, we're going to have to. We're going to have to get some pressure on Danny Werfel, or he will kill you. And we got to we got to make some things happen. I found out you got a number of your players are down with a little illness. Tell me about those players. Well, Daryl Bush has had a hard time holding anything on his stomach. Just slight flu, not big flu. But I don't think he's eating anything all day. So we've given him a few IVs, trying to keep him healthy. Give me your one key for this ball game, Coach. One key for the ball game. Uh, uh, we need to make more big plays than them because there should be a lot of big plays. Coach, thank you. Good luck to you. Thank you, buddy. Good we also had a chance to ask Steve Spurrier earlier what he thought would be the key to this game with him, John. It'll be the, the crucial plays, the block punts or special team play or maybe an interception, turnover, a fumble. Uh, one of those type plays that could either help you or go against you. The Florida Gators won the toss. They deferred, and that's news in itself because oftentimes Steve Spurrier wants that ball right at the beginning, but he's going to give it to Florida State as Matt Teague will kick it off, and deep to return it for Florida State will be Lavernus Coles and Jermaine Springer, and there's a bit of brave uh, boldness in this because Coles and Springer are both freshmen. This is about the biggest ball game those two youngsters have ever been involved in so far in their young lives. Matt Teague, 97 kickoffs. 40 of them have resulted in cutbacks this season. So obviously, he's got a strong leg. And the elements are controlled here. It's a high-hanging kick going to the goal line, where it's taken by Cole. He's the track man. He's the burner. He's belted to the ground at the 13-yard line. And that's where the Florida State Seminoles will start with Thad Busby coming in at quarterback. Busby is, uh, he's got a bad number up there, that 12 interceptions. He doesn't like it, but he thinks he's playing better now than he has been playing. And of course, you can't talk about Florida State offense without talking about number 28, Warwick Dunn, the native of Baton Rouge. He will go over 4,000 yards tonight almost surely. He's had three consecutive 1,000-yard seasons. And the Seminoles get Andre Cooper back healthy from a knee injury at wide receiver. He's a big receiver, 6'2", and about 195 pounds. So from the 13, the Noles go to work as Busby sets up and goes deep. He's got a big one downfield. It is caught by Andre Cooper. And Cooper is at the 31-yard line of Florida for a first down. Fred Weary, the cornerback, couldn't stop the completion, but he stopped the touchdown. Well, Keith, you talk about what are, what are they doing differently. On the first play of the game, the Gators blitz to stop the run. Florida State is ready for it. They're going big time down the field. An excellent throw and catch. A great way to start for the nose. A 55-yard reception, pass and run, and they put it actually on the 32 of Florida. First down for the Seminoles. And Pooh Bear Williams looking for the snap signal because it is very noisy. It is Warwick Dunn having a little trouble getting around the corner, and he won't make the corner. He's going to go out of bounds with about a yard or maybe two-yard loss. The offensive front for the Florida State Seminoles is a good, solid group. Todd Fordham has had an outstanding season. Marcus Long is a good one. Walter Jones can be a great one in time. The defensive front for the Gators, Reggie McGrew is a redshirt freshman who's growing in stature. He's improved steadily through the season, coming off an ankle injury. It is Khalid Abdullah in the backfield right now. The pass is thrown out to him from a slot position, and Abdullah will get it down inside the 25 to about the 24. Remember that Rock Preston is off the team. He's no longer a member of the team, and that's why Abdullah has been moved up in the order. The Florida linebackers led by James Bates, the leading tackler on the team this season. He's a horse in the middle. And the secondary, 
for the Gators is a very, very good one. There really isn't a weakness in that group. Three of the players there, Keith, were all conference players, those defensive backs. So it is third down and three right now. As they work out of the shotgun, hand the ball inside. And it is Warwick Dunn, who at 5'9", 182 or 3 pounds, sort of disappeared in the pile as Ed Chester and Reggie McGrew got to him in a hurry. And it's going to be fourth down and about two now. Take a look at Steve Spurrier, only two and three in bowl games. His record against Bobby Bowden is not much better. Decision being made here by Florida State is what are we going to do? And on fourth down and two, they're going to go. Now here comes some more of the Bowden trickery here as new people come racing onto the field and they turn and they give the ball to the big guy, Pooh Bear Williams, the 280-pound fullback. He is hit by Mike Peterson, a linebacker, and Peterson stops him short of the first down. So they take a chance instead of trying for three, and they don't make it. Keith, what they did was they substituted late. They got their short yardage uh, offense in there, the big blockers, and before Florida could get their big people in on short yardage defense, it didn't make any difference. Florida stopped them with the personnel they had on the field. So here come the Gators now for their play, first play of the ball game from the 23-yard line first down. Elijah Williams opens up at the tailback position for the Gators. And here you see some new formations now. They'll pop a man out of there. That's Williams going in motion, and they've got three wide outs as they go to work out of the shotgun. You didn't see this a whole lot in Tallahassee, but you'll see it a lot tonight. The pass was thrown very quickly to Riddell Anthony, thrown a little bit behind him, and he could not reel it in. Now, Danny Werfel has had one of those kind of seasons that you tell your grandchildren about. He's won every kind of honor there is. He's had a remarkable career. However, he is 1-3-1 and one against Florida State in his career. The backs and receivers, of course, 18 touchdowns this season for Riddell Anthony. That is an NCAA record. He's had 11 straight uh, receptions for touchdowns. 11 in a row in games for touchdowns. So he's had a terrific season. Werfel again has time, and when you give him time, he'll pick your bones. Jacquez Green, the little guy, 5'9", 163, taken down by Iron Capers, but you can move the chains at the first down. This is the group right here that has to play a good football game for the Florida Gators. Ryan Kalick is... And Donnie Young are the only constants in that entire offensive front. Wiley Rich is the key, Keith. Uh, it's the previous game, they had five sacks up the middle. They truly miss Jeff Mitchell in there at the There's center no position. no question about that. Huge loss when he went down with a bad leg and is out for the year. Seminoles are in the neutral zone. In fact, they're across the line, and Werfel has a free play to Ike Hilliard. And Hilliard with a big play down inside the Florida State 40-yard line. Penalty will be on Boulware, trying to anticipate, and Danny Werfel changed up the count on him and trapped him. Boulware was one of the players that was not feeling well before the ball game. The middle linebacker, Bush, and Boulware both had flu-like symptoms, and they caught him offside. Offside, on the defense. The penalties refused. That's Mr. Randy Crystal. He's the referee heading a Big 12 officiating crew. The Florida State linebackers, Daryl Bush is the other man Bob mentioned who's been having some health problems. Crawford and Crockett are solid. The defensive uh, secondary for Florida State, the two corners are going to have a busy night. That's a given. You know that. They're really going to have to play tonight against this bunch of wide receivers from Florida. This is the running back, Williams. And Williams will pick up about one yard to the 38-yard line. 
So we're now beginning to settle down a <laughs> little bit. The first five minutes, I was uh, didn't really have time to warn you that you probably ought to move a yard or two away from your television set because some shrapnel might come flying. I mean, these people were so high when they came out tonight. It was unbelievable. Well, and the crowd that stuffed the dome pretty high themselves. It's a rematch, but oh my goodness, what a prize is waiting to be claimed. From the 38-yard line, second down and nine. Pass down the middle, and it is incomplete. Anthony running a crossing pattern. He was available, but Werfel couldn't find him. Colware was right in Werfel's face. Florida's run five or six offensive plays, and every one of them, Werfel has been in the shotgun. One running play, the rest were pass plays. Take a look at Bullware, who led the nation in sacks, number 58. Gets a piece of his heels. This is what uh, Spurrier wants to do, Keith. He wants to play pitch and catch. It's an ideal uh, situation. Third down and nine. Purple down, drills the ball into the 15. Right between the one and the five, and Anthony has another catch. And that will be a first down. Just getting underway in the Nokia Sugar Bowl at the Superdome in New Orleans. We played just a little more than four minutes. And it's first down Gators from the 29-yard line of Florida State. Check, checking off. Purple looking. Penalty flag thrown. Goes to the end zone. Catch is made. Let's get the flag. Referee has called touchdown. The linesman coming over to talk to him. Let's see what the linesman offers in the conversation. It's going to be a holding against Florida, I'm pretty sure. And that's going to take away a touchdown. The Gators lost a touchdown in the game in Tallahassee. Illegal formation on the offense. Illegal formation is going. In the spot, and we'll replay first down. So that'll bring it back. And they lose the touchdown. So the Knowles get a break. Steve Spurrier came to the operational meeting himself yesterday. He attended the meeting with Randy Crystal yesterday. Chuck Amato, the assistant head coach, did it for Florida State. But Spurrier himself was there. First time anybody could remember a head coach yeah, coming. Exactly. I think hey. I, the, the penalty, the penalty for that, like, Keith, I don't think there are enough men on the line. I don't know whether they called the, the tackle that's closest to us over here on this side. So he's way back, isn't You he? have to have seven men on the line of scrimmage. So they lose it on that call, and it's first and 15. Yeah, that's what it was. Ball is at the 34-yard line of Florida State. Pressure coming. Werfels passes away. Passes caught by Hilliard. And he makes the reception down at about the 17-yard line, and that's the first down. The difference in this ball game early on, Keith, is that Werfel is getting the ball off. The rush is getting there, but it's getting there a tad late. And it's the shotgun that's giving him time to see it and release it. He's throwing the ball real early. A shotgun, he sees how much time he has and he just throws it out there, gives it a little air. He is outstanding with his touch. First down, Gators, no 17 yard line, no score. Werfel's pass thrown to the corner of the end zone. It is way beyond the intended receiver, and you get a penalty flag as Riddell Anthony was trying to break toward the ball. The defender would not let him do it. It was Troy Sanders, and it gets a flag. So Troy Saunders it is, not Sanders, Saunders commits the foul and uh, it appears that at least he was the one who committed the foul because that's where the flag was thrown. Pass in turn, on the defense, automatic first down. So it is first and goal to go for the Florida Gators at the nine yard line. 
lower right corner is the interference. Warfel threw that ball so quickly that he was just trying to jam it. You know, whether it's catchable or not, I think if he hadn't jammed, he could have run under it. So you can't say that. Yeah, he didn't give him a yeah. chance to get to it. Yeah, that's right. So first and goal, they stay in the shotgun. From the nine, Werfel. Here they come. Into the corner, he's there. It's too long. It was Anthony, and the ball was about a yard over his head. Keith, what you're seeing is, is the best of Spurrier. He's had a month to plan and scheme and plan for this game. He is outstanding on the opening drive of a ball game. During this season, when he has only a week, he takes the best plays and puts them in that first offensive drive. They've scored a lot on their opening drives this year. Second down and goal from the nine for the Gators. Into the end zone, Hilliard. No flags, this time, touchdown. You blitz, and that's what they're doing. You leave one-on-one, -on -one, the receiver, tell you to just going to run a little post pattern to the wide side of the field. From the shotgun, you've got a feel on how much time you've got. He lays it to the inside. That's like stealing right there. You've got to put pressure. You can't cover Werfel in this system. You've got to put pressure on Werfel. Flags all over the place, and while they sort this out, let me tell you who the rest of the officials are because they're going to earn their money tonight. Randy Crystal, the referee, John Davidson, the umpire, Carl Johnson, the linesman, line judge, Roger Rogers, Scott Cook, the field judge, side judge is Phil Laurie, Willie Westbrook, Weisbrook is the back judge, Tom Allers is the alternate, Florida comes in as the most penalized team in the SEC, Florida State comes in the most penalized team in the ACC. Florida has 1,095 yards on 125 flags this season. That is a lot. But as Steve says, it's a lot of ticky-tack stuff. It's uh, five yards here and five yards there and misformation and things like that. And the kick is up and the kick is good by Bart Edmiston, who himself is quite a story, who's back healthy now and able to do the kicking. Nine plays, all from the shotgun. They just didn't get there quick enough. If you don't get the workful, you're going to get burned. Japan, from Russia, from everywhere, but they all wind up in the same place. The Wound and Wound Toy Company, one of the world's largest collections of wind-ups. L.A.'s hottest movers, shakers, and big talkers. So bring your inner child, your real child, and your Visa card. Because at the Wound and Wound Toy Company, you won't wind up with anything using American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. I got a lot accomplished this week. Thanks to Jimmy's versatility. Let's see. Hauled the love seat in for reupholstering on Monday. Thanks to Jimmy's cargo space. Took the kids to soccer practice Wednesday. With its spacious interior and luxury ride. Bought groceries. You can do a lot in a Jimmy. And now, a weekend getaway. Jimmy by GMC. It puts you comfortably in command. Pizza Hut employee memo number two, the new pepperoni. You're looking at the future of Pizza Hut. No, not the kid, the pepperoni. Uh, the new pepperoni. And there's just never been a pepperoni like this. We've reinvented the thing. It's meatier and crispier than ever before. In fact, it's so good, we suggest you cook up a batch of it and try it yourself. That way, when someone says, hey, is this the best pepperoni you've ever had or what? You can look them right in the eye and say, yeah. Yeah. Making it great, again and again. Surprise! Funniest Home Videos is sliding down an hour later with a show that will bring down the house. Funniest Home Videos at a new time, 8, 7 Central, ABC, Sunday. 9.48 to go in the first quarter, and the Florida Gators get on the board first. I think, Bob, this is a key time in the, the whole scheme of things in this ballgame. Florida State right here needs to answer. 
Well, Florida State up an opening drive, had a nice drive, took yep. it down to the 20 and went for it on fourth down. Yep. Maybe a field goal getting on the board would have been cool. the right thing to do. That's in the end zone. It'll not be returned, and the nose will start at their 20 first down. Join us on America Online for live inter interactive play-by-play -play stats of today's ball game and tonight's game to be absolute on it. The keyword ABC Sports on America Online. Pooh Bear Williams and Warwick Dunn will be in the backfield for Florida State. Their opening play of the game was a long pass to Andre Cooper. This is their second possession. goes to zero and Florida State has burned the clock what they've done that'll cost them five yards they were concerned with something over on the right side as Florida set That's ten all. people up delay on the offense it's a five yard penalty it remains first down you can see Please Kevin Long on the game clock. Kevin Long kept uh, motioning to somebody on the right side because they had loaded uh, the top side uh, of, of the uh, defensive alignment still the offense going in after a kickoff should have no problem getting the ball snapped within 25 seconds they're going to reset the clock. I think uh, Randy said put the game clock. Game clock. Yeah. Put some time back on it. He wants 9:48 on it, and now he's got it, and we'll go ahead and play the game. In the overall series, Florida leads 24-14 and two, but that's deceptive because things have changed in recent years. Florida State's program, which is in its 50th anniversary this year, has emerged under the leadership of Bowden, and certainly Florida has emerged under the leadership of Spurrier, who is the winningest skater coach ever. And Florida has only won two of the last 11 in this series, Keith. There's been one time. Busby throwing again. Looks like the same play. It is Messam down underneath the ball, and he can't reel it in, defending his Fred Weary. So this time, Weary doesn't let the man get past him as he did in the first play. He kept him within reach, and he knocked it away. This Florida defense is pretty darn gone good. We talk about in the uh, FSU defense, Florida is ranked in, in every category in the nation. Bob Stoops came in this year from uh, Kansas State and said, Steve, it's great to work for him. Just turns it over, lets me, do, lets me run the defense. It is second down and 15. Busby throws it again. He's got a man coming back into the middle of the field. That's Cooper with his second catch of the ball game. Trying to get a little uh, wide receiver screen going in the middle. And he's got something out of it up to about the 24-yard line. I think I think the, the reasoning why Florida State is throwing me and they're throwing on first down is that the Gators are out there with one thing on their mind, stop Warwick Dunn from running. So the Seminoles are throwing to get their mind off of it. And then later on, they're going to come back with Dunn. Third down and six. Busby's pass is good to Messam. Messam curling back inside. Gets enough momentum out of the turn to pick up a first down up near the 35-yard line with Antone Lott there defending. There's no question that this is good thinking on the part of the Seminoles. Busby's got to step up. Got to take some pressure off the running game. Charlie Ward, I mean, uh, Warwick Dunn. Charlie Ward's the old roommate. And... Uh, no question about it. Out of the shotgun, Busby rolls, gets some room. Got a man open. He's good to Green. E.G. Green goes out of bounds inside the 30-yard line. First yeah. down Seminoles at the Gator 28. 
Danny Cannell last year, Charlie Ward a few years ago. This was a pass offense first. Now it's been run with, with Warwick Dunn. But they're opening up, and Busby is stepping up. They've got everybody open downfield. Good game planning. So another big play for the Gators, and they put him back on the chalk, back at the 31-yard line, and Busby rolling to the right, goes underneath with it, and the pass is incomplete, and that one was not very pretty. It was intended for Dugan's number 80, and he really had no chance to catch it. This is the second time these two teams have played in 33 days. Spurrier changed to the shotgun and went right down the field and scored. The Knolls are opening up, throwing on first down, rolling out right and left and throwing deep to get the, some running room for Warwick Dunn. Busby now five out of seven and is passing for 119 yards. Eight and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Seven to nothing, Florida leads. FSU trying to respond and whistles again, stop them. And timeout is charged. Perhaps even more impressive than pure, unbridled power is the ability to harness it. Michelle Green, Badge of Betrayal, ABC Monday. The Goodyear Blitz Stars and Stripes out of Pompano Beach, Florida with Captain Larry Chambers was with us. But the bog, which has been a real problem around the New Orleans area for a week. The Stars and Stripes is at rest at the moment. Steve Spurrier, oh, he's wound tight. Ooh. Mm. He's paying attention. His defense is on the field. He usually lets uh, Bob Stoops take care of the defense. So the ball is on the 32-yard line, second down and 10 for Florida State. And Busby is in the shotgun. Gives him four wideouts. Gets it off. Passes just off the hands. Uh, Lavernus Coles, number seven. Coles is 6-1, and I mean a burner. But that ball was thrown hard and high. Well, he, he's a young and he, he's just a, a true freshman, a running back that's working at wide receiver this year, and he'll be better and better, but he probably got that one in a little bit too far to the inside of the field. The veteran Andre Cooper is back on the field now. He has two catches. He's at the top of the picture for you. Number one. It is third and ten. Let's go the other way with it. And they will not get a first down out of it. The ball comes down to the 25 as Wayne Messam makes that short reception. And they'll be looking at fourth down at about three and a half yards. So Scott Bentley will come on as Bobby Bowden wants to see some numbers on his share of the scoreboard. 
He will try a field goal. He's had a great year. The ball's going to be spotted down at the 33. It will be a 43-yard kick. In the season, he's 16 of 18. He's got plenty of leg for this, and it is good. So Bentley pops one through for the Seminoles at 7.49, first quarter, 7-3 Gators. Sports exclusive brought to you by Nokia, proud sponsor of the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Nokia, connecting people. AT&T, your true choice. Pizza Hut, making it great again and again. And Mountain Dew, the intense slamming, wicked, headbanging taste of dew. And here we go with Florida State getting on the board to make it a 7-3 ball game. Florida leading. Bentley will kick off for the nose. Hilliard and Williams waiting for it for the Gators. It's a short kick. It's very high, and it's taken by Hilliard at about the 12. Look up. Up they got him at the 40. He was about a step and a half away from taking off. On the first possession, Starring Danny Werfel. This is what happened, some of it. Nine plays, all in the shotgun. Paid a price. Five hits out of the nine plays, but they got seven points. Renard Wilson got that last one. It is Fred Taylor in the backfield now with Dwayne Mobley by, with Werfel working out of the shotgun. And looks like that may be the way they'll go all night. <laughs> I, I, don't blame them. It worked pretty well the first time. Knowles come creeping up on defense, and a penalty flag comes out of the umpire's pocket. That's against the offense. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. It remains first down. Little things like that have been driving Steve crazy all year. That's why that uh, penalty total is so high. So it'll be first and 15 now. That average is out to about 10 penalties a game and about 91 yards. Snapped at six seconds on the play clock. The pass is thrown to Jacques Green. And Green is melted hard at the 47-yard line and taken down. James Cozy brought him down, and it was Cozy's man that caught the ball. What the Gators did that time, Keith, is they showed a four-wide receiver look, like a spread look, motioned one of the backs back into the backfield where they had two extra blockers to block in case they had a blitz. So they present a four-wide receiver like there's not many people left to block and then motion back in to pick up linebackers. They've taken 
Nobleman saunders out of the game and sent uh, Vernon Crawford back in, a linebacker, and the blitz is coming. They hand it off inside to Taylor, and Taylor is close to a first down at midfield. They're just short. It'll be about a foot short. Hughes tonight on ABC starts the new year with a brand new episode of NYPD Blue. Jimmy Smith and Dennis Franz star in an all new Blue Tuesday on ABC. That's my show there, Coach. Good one. That's mine. Hand off to the running back. No. Jump all over Brett Taylor and stop him. He lost a yard. <laughs> That's a tough bunch. Well. Shevin Smith is number 30, and he comes up. That strong safety is up and around that line of scrimmage a lot. Let's see what Sawyer's going to do. I wouldn't be surprised if he went for it. And he's going to. That's Jackson, Terry Jackson, a running back, sophomore out of Gainesville, coming in. Steve's attitude is, oh, what the heck? I, I, the chances of me making this are pretty doggone good, and it's early in the game. Well, you know, we can get more points later on. Fourth and one at the 49. Contact. Florida's applauding as if the nose were offsides and the nose are pointing that Florida moved. Well, this, the, the quarterback pulled out. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. Yeah, the quarterback can't pull, pull out. Now they'll punt it. Watch Danny work will pull out. Now he can't do that. Did he have his hands under center? Looked like he had his hands under center. I mean, yep, he did. Yeah, if, if you have your hands under center and you pull out, you can't do that. That's illegal motion. Big old Andre Wadsworth. Nose of uh, block six kicks. And the Gators have had problems with the There's nobody back. Blocks. Nobody back here. Don't let it go. Bobby Stevenson gets it away, and the ball takes a Gator roll, and it's going to roll, and they're going to kill it down inside the five-yard line. So Florida State took nobody deep. Yep. Took a shot at it and couldn't get the left footer. They blocked his first punt up in Tallahassee, but they couldn't get him this time, and he winds up with a 55-yard punt, and the ball is back at the one. Want to get your feet wet on the internet? AT&T makes it easy to catch the wave. Every day, AT&T helps thousands of businesses, big and small, search for information, send email, and set up websites where they can do business with their customers. So whether you're a little kahuna or a big kahuna, grab your board and hop on. AT&T, it's going to be a great ride. Maybe you think only those jet set types need a Nokia cellular phone. Hi, it's me, Flights Delayed. Well, now Nokia's making cellular phones so easy. Late, late. Can I skip my bath? They're practically child's uh -huh. play. Attention, Flight 11 is delayed. Uh, can I call you back? With Nokia's big, easy-to-read screens, last number redial, and sleek designs. No, don't hold dinner. I'm eating my body weight in hot dogs. No, wait up. you got to tuck me in. So get set to join the Jet Set. Nokia, Europe's leading cellular phone, also made in America. Connecting people. Friday. Do you carry grudges? Think revenge is sweet? Perhaps there's something else that would make you feel even better. Watch 2020 and find out. ABC Friday. Florida punter Robbie Stevenson all jacked up. His first punt of the night goes for 55 yards and he's excited because of what happened to him on the first punt November 30 in Tallahassee. He's had three punts blocked this year and they've all been on the first punt of the ball game. Florida State coming after him on the first punt of this game did not have a man back and when you don't put a man back to catch the ball what happens is the ball can roll inside your five yard line and this is very poor starting position. Warwick Dunn is in the tailback position but the quarterback Busby keeps it and tries to wedge it out and get a little breathing room. Dunn has carried the ball one time so far here in the first quarter with five minutes remaining. But fear not, you will see him. You'll see him, there's no question. <laughs> but I've been impressed with Busby so far, Keith, because he stepped up. They knew they had to spread the wealth. They had to have more balance 
offense and defense, and Busby has thrown the ball well. Messerman Cooper, the wideouts for the nose. Bobby Bowden doesn't mind throwing the ball out of the end zone. Like that. And that is incomplete, and that is very good defense for the Florida Gators by Johnny Rutledge, number 58. The pass intended for the tight end, Melvin Pearsall. This is good coverage by Rutledge. He's looking for that tight end all the way. Not supposed to hold him, Johnny. He didn't know whether it was going to be a run or a pass there, Coach. He's a <laughs> linebacker. He says, you're blocking me. I'm going to jam you. <laughs> Andre Cooper leaves the lineup now. It is third and eight. Ball resting at the three. Florida leading Florida State seven to three. At four and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Busby to Dunn. Dunn can't find in the daylight. Mike Peterson, number 29, put a helmet on him. And the Seminoles will have to punt it out of the end zone. It's a good series for the defense. Three plays, now you got a punt. Like the Gators may get this ball back in very good field position. Florida State has a good one. Sean List averaged just under 44 yards per punt on 61 of them this year. Jacquez Green is waiting at the Seminole 45. List gets it out. Pretty good kick. And he sends it back to the 48 where Green has some room. the 27-yard line, a 46-yard punt, but a 21-yard return. So the Florida Gators, field position, field position, kicking game. And they exactly, did right thing. Exactly. The special team, that goes in favor of Florida because Bowden tried to block the punt. They got four poor field position on their own two-yard line. They didn't move it out, and now Florida takes it over. Great field position. And they stay in the shotgun with Taylor and Mobley back there with Werfel. And whistle. And flag. And uh, flare of temper. We've had, the officials have been busy, but it hasn't been an emotional problem at all with the two teams. They've both been very well controlled. Ball start on the... Offense. Except for the ball down. start. I suppose you could say that's emotional. What's the fact? It's kind of hard to hear in here sometimes. Yes, it is. So that'll move the ball back to the 32-yard line with three minutes and 25 seconds to go in the first quarter. Danny Werfel from the shotgun. He's had six, completed six of nine for 85 yards and a touchdown. It's the first time he's been under center right here. First and 15. Last time he went, second time. Last time he pulled out and got a penalty. Exactly. That ball's thrown underneath everybody to the fullback, Mobley. And Mobley is down close to a first down at about the 16-yard line. The Werfel rolls out to get better vision and by a little time, nobody deep. He took what was available and it turned out it was named Mobley, 231-pound fullback from Brooksville, Florida. I think this is good, Keith. They were sacked six times in the previous game with the Seminoles. One of the ways you can avoid the hard rush is get outside the pocket. You can throw quick, you can get uh, keep more guys in the block, or you can get your quarterback outside the pocket. Werfel doesn't have a lot of ability and mobility, but he certainly can move around with it. And the Seminoles call timeout. Sean Hamlet came running up to the umpire in a hurry and called time. And uh, Bush comes to the sidelines to talk with the defensive coordinator, Mickey Andrews. The Seminoles didn't have the right personnel in the ball game, so Bush just called timeout. Uh, 
A moment now with our colleague, Lynn Swan. Money? Thank you very much, Keith. You know, when you have a rematch of two teams, you don't have to change your philosophy, but you do have to improve, improve in certain areas. And I listed a couple of things from the last game that I thought these two teams needed to improve in. We've already seen the results of penalties. Florida lost a touchdown, although they came back and got it. Look at time of possession. If the offense can possess the football, that means you're keeping that other team off the field because they both can score very quickly. Third down conversion, a, a, an abysmal 25% for Florida State in the first game. They need to improve that. And the turnover aspect, you see three for the University of Florida in the last rematch. They do not, that last game, they do not want to have that kind of ball game. What it all means is that you've got to, to execute better the second time around. You don't have to change a thing, but if you can execute and improve the way you play, you've got a chance of making the outcome work out in your favor, Keith. How come he didn't buy a ticket for that big fella, Schaefer Dean, bring him? Uh, well, <laughs> he's got a ticket right in front of the TV set with a baby. <laughs> uh, the son of Lynn and Sharina arrived this year. He looks like he's going to be a fullback to me. <laughs> First down from the 17-yard line now. As Werfel looks and throws, he's got some air on it, but Dale Anthony cannot reach. The ball went to the outside, and Anthony turned to the inside and then couldn't make the recovery against James Cozy. I think a couple of things, Keith, that are different this game than the last game. This first, that, that Florida, Florida is not up in Tallahassee playing under before a hostile crowd. Secondly, they're indoors on a fast track. There is no wind. Up in that other game, the wind, the ball was sailing, and a lot of Werfel's passes were going incomplete. This is perfect conditions for a passing team. Second down and 10, with 2.55 to go in the first quarter, in the long quarter. That's a little pop inside to Anthony, and it goes through his hand. Cozy exults in the play, but in fact, the ball just simply went to the hands of Anthony. that ball very long it's all quick passes he's throwing it quickly is that going to make uh, Mickey Andrews change the Florida State little that's what happens right there you make him throw it quick If he could have held that ball a little bit longer, he would have broken into the open. Yep, he would have been wide open. But because of the, the fear of, of, of the sack, they're getting rid of it quick. He gets it, lets it go. You can see how, how Green was breaking free, but it's all gone. This will be a 32-yard field goal try by Bart Edmiston. He recovered from a knee sprain that he suffered in the game in Tallahassee. He missed the SEC championship, but he's back healthy, and he just nailed one right down the highway to make it Florida 10 and Florida State 3 at 2.44 to go in the first quarter. Friday on 2020 here on ABC, the question, do you hold grudges? Do you think revenge is sweet? Well, maybe there's something that'll make you feel better. Find out what it is. Plus, what if you were allergic to almost anything? Uh, I'm not going to watch that. All those things. <laughs> what is this? I'm allergic to almost everything. Some people say it's happened to them, and I suppose it has. That's 2020 on Friday. They have some good stuff. Maybe, maybe, they, they, ought, maybe they ought to talk to you. No, they don't need to talk to me. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Matt Teague will kick it away as the music comes from the Florida band. Matt ready? The deep people, Stringer and Coles. Can't coach speed, that's why they're back there. They can just tear you up if they get a little daylight on you. Coles, a running back out of high school, comes up to about the 25-yard line. 
Well, here's a look so far. Uh, rushing yardage, Florida State has zero. Warwick Dunn, not a factor in this ball game yet. And Florida State passing for more yardage than Danny Werfel and the Florida Gators offense. And um, But I'm sure we haven't seen the last of Warwick Dunn. They have tried it. He's been in some routes, some pass routes. They have not thrown the ball to him. From the 25, then, Busby sets him up at 2.38 to play, and here's Dunn. Running in traffic will pick up about three yards. He's only 185 pounds. You're not going to go in there and hurt anybody, but you give him a little bit of daylight, and it's see you later. You're looking at his hip pocket. Over the last two games against the Gators, he's averaged 100 and 153 yards per game. He is a big play back. He is back. If you go back further, the last four games against the Gators, he's been outstanding. Comes the pressure. They got him. Cameron Davis. There's something wrong with that play, Keith. Drew Bear Williams, 22, is standing there. It looked like he, just, he was running another play. Cameron Davis, in his first bowl game, comes up limping. Busby just runs to his left. All indication it was going to be a pocket pass. I don't know if he checked off or, uh, or what, but it seemed like everybody was expecting him to be in the pocket. Gators have had a lot of defensive injuries, Keith, in that line. Offensive Maybe. line and defensive line. Third and 19 now. And Busby's got a whole lot of green in front of him, so he pulls it down and takes off and gets a pretty good lick from number four, Lawrence Wright. Jay Showers, the free safety, and Wright, the strong safety. Showers on the ground with him, and Wright really popped him. And he... 12 yards short of his first down. Keith, what you're seeing is the offenses have kind of cooled down now. The first drive for both of them. Now the defensive coordinator and the coaches up in the press box are finding out what are they doing. All right, we're going to adjust. Now they're coming back and, uh, and slowing everybody down. That happened in the third quarter in exactly. the November game. There was no scoring in exactly. the third quarter. Exactly. That's a low snap, and it's almost blocked, but it's a good kick out of there. And it's at the 32-yard line by Jacquez Green. So Sean List with a white shirt right in his face gets the ball out of trouble. 44-yard punt. A half a minute to go in the first quarter. This first quarter is lasting a week. It is, isn't it? That's when, when you have uh, throwing teams, you stop the clock. Incompletions. Terry Jackson is in the backfield with Jerome Evans, and they're working out of the shotgun. Number seven is Workle. You can pick him out. He's the big guy in the middle. He's a big, thick guy, too. Isn't the thing flimsy about this fellow? I mean, he is a big, wide body. Pressure coming. Passes away. Penalty flag is thrown. Jacquez Green makes the catch. The play is good for 11 yards, but let's see about the penalty. Boy, he's throwing that ball quick. Quickly. Offside. On the defense. Take the play. First down, Gators. First down. Florida State jumped out to a 17 to nothing lead in their regular season game. Florida came back, had a chance to tie it at the halftime, missed it. Third quarter was scoreless. Right now, tonight, it's Florida out to the lead, 10 to 3, and the handoff to Terry Jackson. Jackson is a 213-pound sophomore, and he picks up about eight yards on that play. And the first quarter is over. After one, Nokia Sugar It's Florida 10 and Florida State 3. No two GM owners are alike.
We drive a lot of different kinds of cars and trucks for a lot of different reasons. But when J.D. Power and Associates ask new vehicle owners about the quality, sales experience, and delivery of their vehicle, the different GM owners wound up mostly saying the same thing. Same thing. General Motors bring highs and satisfaction right from the start. Come on, Scotty, give me a fry. Uh-uh. America's favorite fries. McDonald's. Go get them. Please. Get your own, man. The Silver Bullet. It's frost brewed to tap the clean taste of the Rockies. Hey, where'd you come from? The Hall of Fame, my man. You guys look bigger on TV. I thought angels were cleaner. I'm not that kind of angel. Siskel and Ebert give Michael two thumbs up. John Travolta puts the film on its toes and sets it spinning, exclaims the New York Times. You gotta learn to laugh. Newsweek says he's a funky delight. The best holiday gift of the year is this delightful and dazzling comedy. <laughs> Michael, the number one movie in America, rated PG, now playing. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you want this? America's favorite fries. McDonald's. Go get them. There's the score. Florida leading. Gators in pretty good shape in this ball game at this point because they own it at the 47-yard line of Florida State. Where it is second down and the long one. About a yard and a half. And Werfel goes back under center with Elijah Williams behind him. Peter Boulware and Darrell Bush are both out of the defensive lineup for Florida State. Both being struggling with the flu. That ball is thrown and dropped by Elijah Williams. He had a touchdown in his pocket. And he just dropped the ball. One of the new plays that Florida has put in for this ball game. Wilson, number 55, working on Collins. Takes a little bit of time to, to do this, and this is this is what happened the other time, last ball game. That ball should have been caught, hit him right in the helmet. That was one of the one of the few times, Keith, they took a little bit longer to throw the football. Harry Jackson is in the lineup now, and there's Whistle. No play. First quarter numbers while they sort this out. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. It remains third down. Minus one yards uh, for Florida State. Florida's not running the ball either. Uh, Florida State throwing for a little bit more. Eight first downs for the University of Florida. Neither one of them doing very good on third down conversions. Five yard penalty will make it third down and six. Timeout is called at the beginning of the second quarter of play. This is the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Maybe you think only those fast lane types need a Nokia cellular phone. Bill, Bob, I'm running late. Well, now Nokia is making cellular phones so easy. So, uh, cover for me during finger paints? They're practically child's play. Right, it's science day. With Nokia's big screens, easy to find names and numbers, and sleek designs. Gooch, could you handle sandbox for me? I'm like in a four-lane parking lot. We're talking rest period before I get there. Oh, I forgot my show and tell. So now we can all be in the fast lane. Nokia, Europe's leading cellular phone, also made in America. Connecting people. Let's get real. Brakes stop your wheels, but tires stop your car. Goodyear AquaTread 2 has a deeper, wider aqua channel than the original AquaTread to sweep water away for outstanding wet traction. AquaTread, only from Goodyear. 
A truck's life is filled with slings and arrows, including the inevitable flying stones and unmanned shopping carts. So we designed the all-new Dodge Dakota with software that optimizes dent resistance. Life on the road may be a battle, but Dakota has superior armor. The new Dodge Dakota. It's full of surprises. From Universal Pictures, a New Year's message for the town of Dante's Peak. Get out. Dante's Peak. This film is not yet rated. Exploding Friday, February 7th. GMA is shaking things up. There's a new you just waiting to come out. New year, new you. Next week on Good Morning America. Here on ABC. Where was on the sideline during that last series, but Keith had nothing to do with the flu-like symptoms he has. He was just out because he wasn't a part of the defensive package for that time. If he's going to suffer the effects, it'll be in the second half, Keith. Okay, Swanny. There's a look at Daryl Bush. Uh, he was a little bit under the weather before the ball game. They need him in that lineup. He is the leader. He gets them in the right play, in the right alignment. He is a very bright uh, linebacker. Chuck Amato right there is the linebacker coach for Florida State. So it is third down and six after the five-yard penalty. And they go back to the shotgun. Hilliard has the ball. There's a penalty flag thrown by the man on the sideline, the linesman. I don't know, Keith. He threw it there. He, he may, they may rule that he pushed off. Yep, maybe an offensive call against Florida. Because it was thrown by the official right over here on this side, looking right at him. And Byron Capers was on the ground. Interference on the offense. It'll be a 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, and he remains third down. Take a look at him over here. He's just going to push off before he runs the little slant to the inside. Receiver comes down, there's contact, and the defensive back goes down, and the, re and, and the re official right over on that side threw the flag right at both of the rear where the uh, two men were. So the Gators now are shooting themselves in the old toe as they come all the way back to the 33-yard line where it is third down and 21. Back on their own 33. Having been down on the 30 and the 46 of the State. And Andre Watsworth finally erupts in the middle of the line. He had a big ball game in the regular season meeting. The interior linesman did, and big Watsworth got loose on this one. Again, the sack comes from up the middle from the reverse side. Wadsworth, five of the six sacks in the first ball game came from the inside. Wadsworth had one. The other defensive tackle, Spain, had two. That gets Robbie Stevenson, the left-footed punter, into the game and sends Peter Warwick deep to receive the kick for Florida State. Stevenson's first kick with no one back to return it was 55 yards. No pressure. Good kick by Robbie. Warwick waiting, takes it at the 33, dances, finds a little room, and then down he goes at about the 38-yard line. You got a penalty flag. It's thrown back on the 30-yard line on the Florida side of the field. And it'll be a 10-yard penalty at 13.32 to go in the first half. We'll take a timeout with the Gators leading 10 to 3. Our engineers gave a 
with the largest interior in its class. They made room for the biggest engine available and specified the longest wheelbase. Then they added one more surprise, the taut, precise steering feel of a sport sedan. So when Sport Truck Magazine named the new Dodge Dakota Sport Truck of the Year, we were honored, but not surprised. The new Dodge Dakota. It's full of surprises. More than 7 million Americans trust their retirement savings to Fidelity Investments. One reason is our passion for helping people realize their retirement goals. In fact, our retirement specialists will happily guide you through all your investment options, day or night, to help you plan for a secure, comfortable retirement. And that should be a great comfort to you right now. Visit our branches or our website, or call 1-800-FIDELITY for a free retirement planning guide. Many of you are getting the at t One rate plan. I just got that plan. I'm with that dime plan. It's not a dime all the time to everyone, you it's know. It's not? No, only one person. But what about everybody else? 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. weekdays, it's a quarter. It's so complicated. Well, the at t One rate plan is very simple. How simple? Calls from home, one low rate to anybody in America, anytime, no restrictions. I'm switching to at t All right, so we're making a little progress. No restrictions, no games. The at t One rate plan. Cigars are in. They're sexy, glamorous, manly. But does not inhaling equal not hazardous? It's your health on ABC's World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. End of three ball game in the Nokia Sugar Bowl. The time remaining you see reflected there. And Busby had a good uh, first quarter. Over 124 yards in the first game, and tonight already he's thrown for 125, and that that figures. That Bobby was talking about it during the week that that the quarterback had to play better in this ball game, and, and they knew it, and, and everybody knew it. Peter Warwick had a big ball game too in the first game, but uh, he hasn't seen the ball yet tonight. They're all over, but. I mean, they didn't give him any chance at all. Big Ed Chester, the sophomore out of Spring Hill, was thrashing on him before he could set his feet to throw. And the loss is back inside the 15 to the 14. Well, Chester is right here, and he's just going to bust right through the inside of that uh, line. That's long, number 78. And uh, that's his seventh sack of the season. They lead the SEC in sacks. You know, all the all the attention goes to the nose. But good defense for the Gators. Second down and 18. Busby having a little trouble. Oh, my goodness. That ball was almost taken into the end zone by big old Tim Bochamp. I mean, he had it on his hands, but he couldn't find the handle. And the big defensive end walks around now this, thinking this about is what might have been. The right defensive end, the white shirt. Watch him. His old screen. Dunn's going to try and hide. This is what Bobby Bowden mean when he said, we don't ask Busby to win the ball game. We just don't want him to lose it. If that would have been intercepted, those are the types of things. They don't want to put too much pressure on the quarterback. But with, but with but Warwick Dunn not getting much yardage, Keith, they're putting more and more pressure on the quarterback. That was almost a disaster for the nose. Shotgun, you've got Cooper and uh, E.G. Green down here. And this is a reverse with Peter Warwick carrying it. Running back in traffic. He breaks free for a moment and picks up a first down. No, he didn't get the first down. Oh, sorry. The big sack prevents him from getting his first down. He got across the 25-yard line after running about 40 yards and risking his life going back into the middle where the big trees were. It's a kind of an interesting play, though. I think that's one of the new yeah. ones. Both of these yeah. guys, uh, Bowden and Spurrier, love these new plays. So Sean List is out for his third punt of the night, 46 and 44, on the first two. And Green is a dynamite punt returner. Nice height, deep carry, and uh, they don't crowd him. So everything is legal downfield, and it'll be the Florida ball at the 27 yard line after a 48 yard punt. Gripping, powerful, unforgettable. Go 
ghosts of Mississippi has Oscar written all over it. You ain't never going to convict me of killing a nigga in the state of Mississippi. One of the most powerful films of the year, Rob Reiner shows us what courage is all about. It's not like there's anything you can do about it. We're going to see about that. Alec Baldwin, Whoopi Goldberg, and James Woods in a Rob Reiner film. Ghosts of Mississippi, rated PG-13. Now in select city, starts Friday nationwide. Usually, the simplest are the most effective. So at Nokia, we make it as easy as possible for you. Nokia, connecting people. This ABC Sports exclusive brought to you by Nokia, proud sponsor of the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Nokia, connecting people. And the new Dodge. It's about change. Steve Spurrier, watching his team now take possession at their own 27-yard line, leading 10-3, Bobby Bowden. Bit frustrated in that his offense has not produced much so far. And uh, they've got four wideouts now in the Florida alignment with Werfel back there by himself. Come. High snap. Here they come. He gets it away. He's got Hilliard. He's got the ball. And he's out of bounds at the 27 yard line of the penalty flag. Way back up field where the quarterback Werfel was buried. They may be a roughing call back up field. Roughing the passer on the defense. That was a big play though. Well the blitz was on and they had single coverage. There was a free man. Take a look from behind. The blitz is on, but he's in shotgun. Nobody picks up uh, Crawford. And this time, unlike the last time, he gets it off. There's the penalty for hitting the quarterback. If he had if he'd kept his uh, head up and uh, kept the shoulder out of his back, he probably wouldn't have been flagged. But Randy oh, Crystal didn't make any down. bones about it. He threw the flag, and the football advances all the way down to the Florida State 13-yard line. And that was a good call. There's no question about that. Uh, Steve's been bellyaching uh, for the last month about late hits, but uh, Mickey Andrews has to put pressure on Werfel if he's got a chance to win this ball game. Right now, the Gators are knocking on the door again. Same alignment, and Werfel throws it to the corner. And it is incomplete, intended for Anthony, defending Colsey. And that was a very good defensive job by James. Here's a look at it. This is what Florida likes to do when they get inside the 15-yard line. They, their, their receiver, good jumping ability, really should have had it. Uh, Colsey's only 5'10", Anthony's 6 feet, but he can really get up there. James was right in his numbers. Second down and ten. Now he's telling him what to do. When he raises that foot up, he tells the center, okay, you can snap it when you're ready. Pressure, but Werfel throws it back to the other way. And it is out of bounds, short of the goal line to Fred Taylor. He went out at about the two. That was a hard throw. You got to be strong to make that. Back across his body. He's got three wide receivers to our left side. They are covered. Taylor's going to slip out and come right across. Right there, number 21. 
he must know from practice that that play is usually open. If the wide receivers aren't open, go back to your halfback. So it's first and goal from the two-yard line. Hand off to Taylor. Touchdown. point try from Bart Edmiston senior out of Pensacola nails it out of Michael Yorkins snap and Robbie Stevenson oh. look at the touchdown usually when Florida gets down here against Florida State they've thrown the ball even from the one or two yard line this time they just run to the tight end side and push it in and it's 17 to 3 Gators. maybe you think only those jet set types need a nokia cellular phone hi it's me flight's delayed well now nokia is making cellular phones so easy lately can i skip my bath they're practically child's uh -huh. play attention flight 11 is delayed uh, can i call you back with nokia's big easy to read screens last number redial and sleek designs no don't hold dinner i'm eating my body weight in hot dogs no, wait up. You gotta tuck me in. So get set to join the jet set. Nokia, Europe's leading cellular phone, also made in America. Connecting people. Can this simple structure make a car more fun? Well, if you work at it. The cross members in the undercarriage of a Dodge Stratus make the rail stiffer, which make the frame stronger, which make the ride better, and make the car more fun to drive. You can be sure we've been working on the rail all the live long day. Dodge Stratus. Lease a Stratus now for as low as $2.59 per month or get $1,000 cash savings. Sunday at an all new time, 7, 6 central. I can't turn it off. What happens when Superman's powers go completely out of control? I'm like a loading gun. It's not safe for you to be around me. Lois and Clark, an all new episode in a new super time, 7, 6 central, Sunday. Darn. Then, surprise! <laughs> Funniest Home Videos is sliding down to an hour later with a show that'll bring down the house. Funniest Home Videos at a new time. All starting at 7, 6 Central, Sunday. Well, there he sits, the general, and he's got things pretty well in hand right now, leading 17 to 3. As they go 73 yards in 26 seconds. Doesn't take long when you got a great big old play and a 15-yard penalty at the end of it. Here's the kickoff by Teague, and he killed it all the way into the end zone. There, oh, he's coming with it from four yards out of the end zone. And paid for it up at the 16-yard line. They're jumping around, but he's going to be called down, and it'll be Florida State ball. And the Seminole offense right now, Bob, is caught up in the old tango gig. Well, they've, they've, they've been three and out on their last three possessions. Dunn has rushed for four, four times for zero yardage. Their last three possessions, they've been three plays and punted. And you need to get Warwick Dunn into the offense. They tried, Keith, that, off, that screen pass on the last possession. Just didn't work. It was almost intercepted. So Dunn is back there now with Busby out of the shotgun formation. Picks up uh, the rush. Dunn's a good blocker. Ball thrown to Messam on the sidelines, and Wayne steps out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. Well, there's not a whole lot on that one. Time remaining in the first half, 11-16. I think it's, uh, they better watch out here because the, the, the Delta is starting to leak a tad. And the Gators are, I mean, they're jacked up. They're flying right now. And once they get you reeling, get you back on your heels, they can put you 16. away. Second down and eight. 
dropped by Wayne Messon. Thrown behind him a bit, thrown on his hip, and he couldn't pick it up, and here is Swanick. For their opponents, 28.7 to 7.1, 4 to 1, and I can bet you this, Bobby Bott knows he's got to put a rope on these gators in his first half, or else Keith, they will drag him down into the swamp, and they'll never come out. I had a little trouble getting the sound, but Busby working out of the shotgun. Now he's got one, two, three, four. He's got five possibilities to throw the ball here. He goes down the middle with it, and no chance. E.G. Green was defended by Shea Showers. He had no chance to get to the ball. And once again, for Florida State, it's a one, two, three kick. Green's going to go to the center of the field and run a little square in. Showers is going to be right there as he reads it. That's not interference. Showers has as much right to the ball as does the receiver. Sean Liss is in for the punt, his fourth. His best one was the third. It was 48. He gets this one out of there. He doesn't get it to turn over, so it's a little shorter and possibly a return by Green. Yes. Green dancing around, you better, better corral him pretty quickly. He's at about the 49-yard line on his return of seven yards after a 40-yard punt. And so now the Gators are sitting in the middle of the field at their own 49-yard line first down. Season premiere of ABC's Wide World of Sports will feature the NutraSweet World Challenge of Champions from Innsbruck, Austria. That's coming up. Saturday also will announce the Wide World Athlete of the Year for 1996. ABC's Wide World of Sports. Keith, this defense for Florida State needs to make something happen. They have been dominant all year, but they have not been dominant here tonight. The shotgun, the quick passing, and the quick throwing we have one sack by Florida State. Coming in, they led the nation in sacks with 67. Out of the shotgun, Werfel gives it off to Taylor. And Taylor will move it over to the Florida State 49, pick up a two yards on the play. That's a new formation that the uh, Gators are using. They've got their two backs stacked in the backfield. And, and I think they do it, one, for, for pass protection, Keith. Secondly, just to give them something that, else to think about. Florida's had great field position starting on their own 49 uh, on an average, and FSU not nearly as good. Second and eight. Oh, they got him this time. Got him on the 45-yard line. Peter Bullwear, number 58. Number 58, the top of the screen. Bullwear on Collins. And Taylor. And then he gets back and gets a piece of him. That's just outstanding work. Boy, he's good, isn't he? Bulwark came in with 19 sacks on the year. As we mentioned, he led the nation in sacks coming in. So back him up, make it third down and 14. Back up to 45. He doesn't play like he's sick to me, does he? No. <laughs> Here they come. Whirlpool whistles it away in a hurry and goes down hard. Two of them hit him, and Whirlpool... And he's looking around to see if the building is turned upside down or what. It's Wilson and Bulwer both in this one. Well, this is a middle screen, so the linemen are letting those ends go. You can't let them go. <laughs> Here's the other side. There's a lineman up there. Wadsworth or Spain or one of those guys is looking for the halfback. In the first game, the middle screen was a big part of the Gator offense. You cannot let those guys loose. You better call the paramedics. <laughs> you got that right. Robbie Stevenson's in the punt. Dee Feaster is waiting to return it. He's a tailback. 
Stevenson hits it well. Back to the 13. Feaster comes up the middle. Good return. Steve Feaster runs the ball out to about the 37-yard line. So Stevenson's low line drive front of 42 yards is returned 24. Monday late night, politically incorrect, starring Bill Maher comes to ABC with first night guests including Roseanne, Julio, Ariana Huffington, and G. Gordon Liddy. Hotter topics, cooler guests, when politically incorrect with Bill Maher. Premieres on ABC Monday after Nightline. First down, 37. And they snap it short to Warwick Dunn. And the first play of the night in which he has accomplished something. He moved it from the 37-yard line up to uh, close to the 45. And you got a Gator shaken up on the play. Johnny Rutledge, man's shaken up. Rutledge, number 58, right of your screen. Snapped it directly to Dunn. He gets hit by his old man. He got hit by Lot. Yeah, Lot popped him. He's hearing some birdies in his helmet, I think. You know, uh, that ball almost kind of went between Dunn and Busby, and Dunn had to reach out to catch it. So that was close to not working, too, but once the war gun gets his hands on it, you hold your breath. Watch this. Watch the ball was snapped. Uh, Dunn, oh, oh. I don't think Dunn was ready. I don't think so either. He wasn't ready for the snap. I mean, everybody else was, but he was a little late. He probably forgot what the snap count was. That happened. So near the 45, second down and two. This is, oh, this is Pooh Bear Boy. <laughs> Who in the world was that ran into him there? <laughs> it was Keith Kelsey, a freshman, 218 pounds, stands six feet tall. He's pretty well built, but remember now, Pooh Bear weighs 286 pounds. Kelsey's in there playing for Rutledge, who just went off, and if... And if <laughs> if, if Rutledge hadn't have gotten hurt, he'd been over there. Kelsey's going to say, hey, Rutledge, come on back. I get in for one play, and I get Pooh Bear out in the flat. Oh, me. That's a good way to get that famous scar under your chin. <laughs> oh, boy. He's a little bit short. A little bit short. See that Joe Germain got his uh, scar yesterday. Did you see that? Yes, yes, sure did. What a great game that was, huh? Wasn't that something? The Sun Devils fell, but they did it gallantly. Yeah, you got it. And admire the courage of the Buckeyes for uh, hitching up their britches Bruce, and coming back. Bruce Snyder, a great job with Arizona State, but you you got to be happy for John Cooper. Arizona State being the other undefeated team in Division 1A. And as we play this game tonight, Florida State, which is trailing by a score of 17 to 3 in the second quarter, is the only undefeated team left in Division 1A. Eight. eight and a half minutes to go in the first half. The dive ahead for the first down following the offensive line surge, and it's good. So you can move the chain. Because of that loss, Arizona State uh, has one loss. If Florida State wins this game, they'll be the national champion, uh, being the only team left undefeated. If uh, Florida wins, and like you said earlier, you got five. Right. Big you argument. Got, you got five teams tied. The natural process, but, of course, you would you, think would be that Florida would move up three, beating number one would right. be voted the national championship. You would expect that. But it doesn't always happen. Pressure coming. Busby gets it away. The pass is almost intercepted on the ricochet. Oh, my goodness. Peter Warwick finally getting a chance, but the ball was thrown so hard by Busby, and Keith Council is the guy that almost came up with it for the Gators. Defensive tackle. We may see this fella tonight. 
Dan Kinder is the backup, has uh, done well when he's been in there. He played really well against Wake Forest, threw for a lot of yardage. Busby 8 of 16 and 129 yards is cooled off here in the second quarter. That ball is batted right back at him by Dimitri Jackson. Ball safety, number 27, slapped it away. Jackson number right at the bottom 27 is lined up as if he was covering the wide receiver and at the last second when the ball was snapped blitz there's a strong safety blitz and uh, Busby didn't see him coming and knocked the ball down that's a good defensive play and it's third and ten now for the Seminoles at their own 48 yard line He's got a man messing down the middle. The pass is complete inside the 30 for the 29 first down Seminole. It's a good play, and it's something that he needed for his confidence. He's just going to go down and run a square in over the center of the field. The two receivers on the left side go deep to clear it out. Messon comes underneath. If that ball is caught on time and the receiver has enough speed, a lot of times you can come out the other side with a big game. Cameron Davis, linebacker, is hurt and down on the play and timeout for the injured player. So Cameron Davis, who's been dogged by injuries in his career, has another one, apparently. He hurt his knee early on in this ball game, limped off the field, got back in. Been a tough, tough year with the injuries for uh, Steve, uh, both in the offensive and defensive lines. Here's 20. Well, Keith, Johnny Young, number 75 on the offensive line for Florida, is on the sideline. He twisted his right ankle. They're trying to get that retake. He make a win. But Danny Warfel bruised his right shoulder in that last series. And Fred Taylor, the running back, has a slightly separated shoulder. So while they have the lead here for Florida, they're getting banged up a lot, Keith. All right, we've got a continued timeout in the Nokia Sugar Bowl at 7.49 yeah. to go in the first half. Pizza Hut employee memo number three, subject pricing. Okay, we want to take a few minutes to take you through our pricing plan for our new pepperoni pizza. Everyone got their calculators? Good. Throw them out. Every medium pepperoni, $7.99. Every large pepperoni, $9.99. Okay, pop quiz. How much? $7.99. How much? $9.99. And what was that for? Pepperoni. 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 I'll tell you, this is a good start to making it great. What Inspector Roper knows... It has been decided that you will take on a new partner. Oh, Captain. They don't teach in books. Tell me what you see. They see a scum behind the counter with a sword off. There's a female hostage down. And there's a special on toilet paper four for $1.29. What he's capable of, they don't recommend at the Academy. Hey, it's the Eddie Murphy. This is it. This is your ride. Oh, come on now. Who am I? Red Fox? <laughs> Metro. <laughs> Rated R. Starts Friday, January 17th. The last time the Florida State Seminoles lost a bowl game was the 1981 Orange Bowl to Oklahoma. Quarterback, now Congressman J.C. Watts, found split in Steve Rhodes for an 11-yard touchdown pass, went for two and got it, and beat the Seminoles 18-17, 1981. I saw J.C. the other day. He was, In fact, he was in Miami speaking to the uh, Orange Bowl prayer breakfast, and then he flew over here to speak to the uh, Sugar really, Bowl really prayer I'm really proud breakfast. of him. I think he has just become a sensational young man. Class oh. act, 29-yard line, 17-3. to three. The Florida Gators have the lead. And the Seminoles now with that first down... Get one here that sure would make the trip to the clubhouse easier. He's got a man wide open. Touchdown, E.G. Green. The Florida defenders ran together and fell down, and it was a gift for Green and the Seminoles. Indeed, that 
will put a little spring in your step. The kick by Bentley is good. And it's 17 to 10 with 7.28 to play in the first half. And Bobby feels a whole lot better. Just what Bobby ordered. Take a look. Here's the receiver. He's going to go down to the center. And as the quarterback rolls out, the free safety is going to come this way. And the receiver is going to make back across the green. Receiver goes up the field. Now stop it right here. He will. The receivers are going to run it. The defenders are going to run into each other. They'll both fall out. He breaks to the middle. You never get anybody that wide open. And Busby does a smart thing by just laying it up. He knew he had him wide open. Good move, but he's going to the outside. That's just good coaching right there. Good coaching and big play for Florida State. How much fun do you think those two DBs are going to have uh, when they go to lunch with uh, Bob Stoops? That's embarrassing, Coach. <laughs> 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 Big play for Busby. He knows, he knows that, the, that the run is being shut down with Warwick Dunn, and he has to come through. 17-10 ball game. Suddenly everything looks brighter for the Seminoles and their faithful. And here's the kickoff, a low line drive that goes through the end zone. It'll come back to the 20. First down for the Gators. Now you got a penalty flag sitting up there on about the 18-yard line. That came pretty late, didn't it? Let's check in with Swanee for a moment. Well, okay, Keith, just a little bit of bad news for the senior Cameron Davis defensive end. He sprained his right knee, and the doctors tell me he is out for the rest of this ball game. Not the way he wanted to end his last ball game as a Gator, Keith. First down. All right, Swanee, that's a personal foul call against Florida State. And it moves the ball out to the 35. Watch the left side of the screen here. Let's see if we can catch something. Yeah, that's right there and through that. So the Seminoles now, having absorbed the personal foul call and having scored the touchdown, all jacked up, smother that play just about the line of scrimmage. All right, the quarterbacks are doing. Let's have a little quarterback comparison. Danny Werfel, the Heisman Trophy winner. Numbers are very similar to Thad Busby, who's been a little bit inconsistent this year, but tonight is doing what his team needs, and that is coming through. Heisman Trophy winners don't always win in the Sugar Bowl. Many of them have had a hard time here. This is the Riddell Anthony flying to run a wide receiver screen back into the middle of the field, and they get about three or four yards on the play. And the Seminoles now are really flying around on defense. Number 45, Henry Crockett, a senior out of Pompano Beach. They are going to lose some real talent from the defensive team this year. Just, just mention the two defensive ends. Yeah. <laughs> and Mr. Bush. Yeah. He's a junior. Yeah, Bush is back. The two linebackers, Crockett and, Crockett and Crawford, are gone. And we got folks bouncing around. Look like the work we're trying to give them a hard uh, count. And uh, Mo Collins uh, moved on the play. It's obvious that, 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 that Spurrier has had Werfel work on his cadence to try to control the line of scrimmage. Dead ball. Full start of nothing. Remain third down. Now he gets the Seminoles to jump initially, but watches his uh, right tackle. See his right tackle moves. Yeah, Moe's looking at Peter Bullware. Well, <laughs> you really can't <laughs> Third down now, and 11. Werfel gets it away. And a penalty flag is off from the lineman across the way. I don't think that play's going to hold up. I figured it went up to make the catch. It's one of those kind of things that very often times is Dead ball. holding. Ball and it's ball stuck. 
got to be got to be the tackle on that side if the linesman what's the four side tackle 79 Collins team back it up just back it up a little bit there he is on the right side of your screen Mo Collins still blocking on Bulware just moves a little in the lines the linesman on the far side is looking right at him that's nine flags now on the Gators for 55 yards. It's those types of things. It's not so much always the yardage. It's what it takes away from you. Right. It took that play away. And it's now third and 16. And a big difference. Look out here. Oh, he got loose. And Werfel goes down hard. The ball is caught by Duck and Green. Danny Werfel was just ripped as he let it go, but he hit his man right where he had to hit him. And it's a big play for the Gators. It's a good call. Third and long. Go ahead. And look at this. There's nobody in the middle here. It's one-on-one. -on -one. It's third and long. Go ahead and throw it downfield. Maybe you'll hit it, or maybe you'll get a defensive interference call. Okay, it's easy for Green. Now watch what's going on at the other end. Watch this. Wham, wham. That's all right. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, I, well, I'm glad I'm not there with Danny. <laughs> yeah, nothing wrong with I'm it. I'm just saying, with all, with all the attention, there was no foul. No there. foul. No, yeah. no, no foul. Yeah. Just clean, hard yeah. football. <laughs> but Steve, I, I don't know. He's probably jumping up and down about it. Werfel lets it go again, right on the numbers. I can you get to lose. It's a touchdown for the Gators. Oh, boy. You beat on him. You beat on him like an old church bell, and suddenly he stuck it in the end zone. Werfel is now 13 of 22, 246 yards and two touchdowns, and we've got 518 to play in the first half. Edmiston for the point. Mark Lutz is through. And the Gators respond to the Seminole with a touchdown to make it a 24 to 10 ball game. You've got the most accurate passer in college football, and you've got single coverage here and over here, and what you're going to have is the wide receiver just running a little slant one-on-one, -on -one. and if you don't get to the quarterback, he's going to kill you. Now, this is the advantage of artificial turf. Look at that stop. And great running ability. Both Hilliard and Anthony on the other side have the ability to run with the ball afterwards. Take a look from behind the defense. Flip, push, and Crockett, both flips. The difference in this game, Keith, is in the first game, they were getting to work with. Now he's getting rid of the ball because you don't, you're playing indoors. It's perfect condition. There's no wind blowing the ball. You couldn't want any better conditions if you were a throwing team than an indoor dome stadium artificial turf. That team will kick it off now. I can hear you. Is that a fine season? Oh. One thing about it, the uh, defensive guys don't get a whole lot of rest when you do it that way. High, high kick by Teague. Four-yard line for Coach. Florida special teams have done very well tonight. Ball is on the 21-yard line where it'll be first down for Florida State. Busby is at quarterback. Hilliard came into the ball game with 29 career touchdowns. That's second in SEC history. Two outstanding receivers, Keith. Uh, Anthony and Hilliard. Well, that green isn't bad. Well, green, you're right. <laughs> you talk about duos, though. It's... 
First down from the 21 now. Let's see if the Seminoles can do something. Low snap. Busby handles it. People after him. Throws the ball. Drops. Incomplete. Flying. He went to the safety valve. Pooh Bear Williams, the fullback. And there was uh, no real reason uh, that play could work with Bates bearing down on him. And it didn't. I mean, Bates was just running downhill. Bates, uh... Kind of a loose wire at times. He's a leader of that defense. <laughs> <laughs> he is. He's all conference. He's a middle linebacker. He's a player. He uh, five five players on that Gator defense were all SEC. They can play. Well, you're a line, middle linebacker like that. You got to see both the Lightning every once in a while. Busby step tries to get away from the pressure, but he can't do it. And then uh, right down in the middle of all of the melee and making the tackle is Big Ed Chester. Chester's second sack of the night. To the left side, that's long, 51, and really this is just a, it's a coverage sack. The quarterback tried to get out of there, and uh, Gators came in with 48 sacks on the year, which was tops in the SEC. They've got three tonight. It is now third down and 16 with the ball on the 15-yard line for the Seminoles. They snap it to Dunn. And Warwick Dunn cannot get loose. Every time he moves, there's somebody moving with him. And they'll have to punt it again. advertised decision that he was not going to do the play calling. So this is that may change. This is what he does right now, Keith. Right here. He is motivating his team and he coaches his coaches. He ran down there to get that offense fired up. Oh, that's a good kick by Sean Liss. But look at Green. He's taken down at about the 47-yard line. Coming up at halftime, the Nokia Best Connection Sweepstakes will feature this man, Greg Smith, from Lutcher, Louisiana. That's down by Baton Rouge. He's going to get to throw one football, try to throw it through a one-square-foot opening. And if he can do it from a distance of about 12 yards, he will win a million dollars. And if he does, I'm going with him. I'm going to go down and introduce ourselves. <laughs> He's a left-hander. You never know. Might no. pop it right through there. Nobody in the backfield except the quarterback. Rips at the bottom of the picture. Working. Being harassed and harangued one more time by Mr. Bullware. Bullware. Bowyer is just going to run around Pillar. I think it's uh, Zach on that side. No, that's the tight end. There's no way the tight end, Allen. You can't expect your <laughs> you can't expect your tight end to block that you, man. You call him Mister in the second quarter. He keeps playing like this. He'll be served. Yeah, he was sick in too the before quarter. the ball game. Bowyer, second down. Call it 11. Passes away and batted down by the defender on the play. Number four, Troy Saunders. This ball was almost picked off. The receiver stopped and Danny threw it a little bit further to the inside. Riddell Anthony, the intended receiver. Anthony at the top of the screen is going to go down with a little curl. Watches the balls inside a little bit. Saunders almost had had a piece of that. As, Actually, uh, Riddell knocked it down, didn't he? Crockett, number 45, yep. goes over and says hello. Yep. There are times when the receiver has to beat the defender. Keep that other fellow from going the other way. Third down, 11. That's down the middle. Down to the 40-yard line, and a penalty flag is thrown on the far side of the field. The pass caught by Jacquez Green from Fort Valley, Georgia, right in front of Byron Keepers. Something to do with somebody downfield. You know, 
eligible receiver down field. It's a five-yard penalty. Steve wants to know. Down. Steve wants to know who it was. Who was it? And he obviously doesn't like it. <laughs> Of course, you, it, yeah, everything, everything about Steve's career is right on his face. He's not, he's not hiding any of his emotions. All right, right. He works that hard. If he did, he'd blow up. Can I think <laughs> being that intense? His, his young son, uh, Steve Jr., is on the staff as a graduate assistant, and he, he had, uh, adopted a son, too, uh, Scotty. Third down now and 16 for the Gators. A 24 to 10 ball game, and it's in the air, and it is incomplete. And it is Troy Saunders making the play on Redell Anthony. Saunders comes up a little tender, but yeah. he's made two good plays in a row. And in to punt comes Robbie Stevenson. Dee Feaster is deep for Florida State. Florida and the state, Keith, needs some, something out of their special teams or their defense. That's where they have the advantage. Florida has the best offense, no question, but Seminoles need something out of their special teams. Whoa, Stevenson got most of that one. 16-yard line for Feaster. He's got some room. That one man, number 16, got outside and grabbed him by the coattail and pulled him down. Brian... Uh, uh, Xavier McCray, 46, did it. Now let's spend a moment with John Thunder. All right, Keith, thanks a lot. Coming up at halftime, Todd will break down the first half, and Florida looks like an entirely different team this time around. Yeah, much more physical on both lines of scrimmage, and the move of Danny Werfel into the shotgun has been a great move for Florida. They have responded to the challenge by Steve Spurrier. We'll have a chance to talk with him at halftime as well. Right now, Keith, back up to you. Okay. Two minutes, that's plenty of time for uh, these offenses to score. Oh, easy. From the 34-yard line. Under center, Busby having a little trouble. Somebody after him all the time. Pass completed to E.G. Green. Green is taken down inside the 45 at the 43 of Florida. Clock stops as they move the change. A minute and 49 to go in the first half. Well, if you like the running game, you won't like this game much because there's not much running on either side. Twenty-four, ten, Florida leading. Go back to the shotgun. Busby going big. Cooper can't get to the ball, and a penalty flag comes out of the bucket. Weary lost the ball. Weary did not see the ball. I think you've got an interference call right here. If so, that will be the 11th Florida penalty. We haven't even played a half yet. Randy was warned, get a good night's sleep <laughs> before the game. Pass interference yep. on the defense. 15 yard penalty from the pre previous spot. Automatic first down. Weary is number 24. He leaves the side of the ball and then just runs to the receiver, puts his arm out on the receiver, and Cooper is trying to catch it. It's a nice call by the official. It's a, a really an easy call and probably a smart play by Weary because he, he lost where the ball was and he says, I'm going to the receiver and just interfere with it. 28-yard line, first down for the Noles. Ball is handed off to Warwick Dunn. Tucked it back, runs into trouble at the 25. Lawrence Wright, right up on the line of scrimmage and involved in that defensive play, but there's a Gator shaken up. It's uh, Keith Council. A defensive tackle. Teams all year have come in against Florida State and said, we're going to stop Warwick Dunn, and they'll put seven and eight players up in the box to stop the uh, stop the offense. 
and he's faced this all year and for the last three years he's made over a thousand yards each of those years it's just been amazing what he's done with the defenses stacked to stop him they're not uh, it looks like it's some kind of an arm or a shoulder injury to council who is a 273 pound junior out of Orlando A minute 15 to go in the first half. Friday, do you carry grudges, think revenge is sweet? Perhaps there's something else that would make you feel even better. Watch 2020 and find out. ABC Friday. Something is coming. Something you can't control. Something like nothing you've ever experienced before. <laughs> Written and produced by the master himself, ABC proudly presents Stephen King's ultimate vision. We're going to do the scariest thing on American television. Stephen King's The Shining, coming soon to ABC. Time still out for Keith Council, injured on that last play. It is Florida State's football. Second down and six, the ball on the Florida 24-yard line. The Gators are leading the Seminoles by a score of 24 to 10. And we're getting close to the end of the first half. Thad Busby talking to the people upstairs, trying to find a way to penetrate the Gator defense, which has been plenty good so far in this game. But they have lost Cameron Davis, it appears. And now uh, we'll see about Keith Council. Thad's talking to Mark Rick, who is the offensive coordinator upstairs. There's a look at Mark there in the middle. He calls all the plays. Uh, Bobby has turned that over to him. Bobby just kind of coaches the players on the sideline, gets them motivated, and, and tells the coordinators, Keith, and I like this. He says, he says, don't, don't be afraid to let it all go. Let, you know, he says, if you have to blitz the Mickey Andrews, go ahead and blitz. And if you let it all hang out, he talks to the Mark Rick, don't be afraid to throw it deep and, and do what you need to do. Don't be uh, conservative. And now at a minute 10, let's be back to throw it. And throws high and incomplete. He had the ball where Messam could not reach it. He got his hands on it, but it was too high and could have been picked off. Pico Brown had a look at it, didn't quite get there. Brown is an important personality in that uh, defensive secondary coming back from injury. He was right through his hands. Anytime you have a tip ball and it's that high and in the air that long, hold your breath. Defenses have a great shot at it. To the sideline. He gets past the marker. He gets the first down. Does not, however, get out of bounds. It's Andre Cooper. So now they have stopped it on the sideline at 55 seconds to move the chains. The O's coming up. Put the ball down at the 12. And first down, Seminoles. The national championship sitting right in the middle of the table. These two teams are scrapping about it. Mugsby gives to Dunn. He's got some room. He's got a block from Green. He's got a touchdown. Finally, Dunn finds a way. for the point. Bangles it through. 24-17 ball game. The Warwick Dunn averages over 100 yards a game. Before this play, they'd only had 15 yards rushing in the first half. Seventy is Thomas. Good block right here. Right there by G. E.G. Green. Green that comes up. Then has always played well against the Gators and played very well in big games. And this is the first really uh, play that he's made in this ball game. Good block by the fullback. And he just outruns right number four to the sideline.
done. Canter's in to make it a seven-point ball game. The Seminoles with 40 seconds to go in the first half of play. Pulled within seven. And uh, brightened the horizon considerably for the Seminoles. This is a short kick that finally controlled by Elijah Williams. And Williams comes back up to about the 33-yard line. In the 1995 Sugar Bowl, when Florida State and Florida had a rematch after a 31 tie, Dunn had uh, the first pass completed of his collegiate career, a 73-yarder to Omar Ellison. And the Seminoles won the ball game over the Gators by 23-17. He's awfully important to this offense, and the Gators know that. They know he can throw passes. He threw one 33 days ago, November 30th, in Tallahassee. They know that they need to stop Warwick Dunn. And the ball off goes to Terry Jackson, and he gets outside, and he's got some room, and he's a big fella. And he runs all the way down to the 31-yard line of Florida State, and there's 27 ticks remaining on the clock. Better not go to sleep. Not on this offense. They score too quickly. They got a timeout left. Bobby's writing down some notes for what he wants to say at halftime. Looks like he's already got about five or six on that sheet. Yeah, he may need an extra five minutes. Yeah. That's intended down the sideline for Riddell. Uh, Anthony and uh, it was overthrown. He had no chance. Also was welcome. Thad Busby getting uh, all the conversation he can with Mark Rick, even though halftime is at hand. Troy Saunders has come into the ball game at that cornerback position. Bob has done a pretty good job with Anthony. He has. Mickey Andrews has always played a lot of defensive backs, and because of the injury, injury to roll. Cozy and Saunders are rotating over there at that corner position. Anthony has two catches for 13 yards. That's all. He's caught 22 in the last two games. Pressure coming. Bowler. He's got a hold of him. It's intercepted. Intercepted by Vernon Crawford. Going to somebody that can run. Crawford is set hard by Wilson. But finally they get Crawford down around the... Uh, 38-yard line, and time runs out. Well, here's a look from behind the quarterback. Bullware again, will not go down, tries to make a play, and Crawford, 47, sees visions of grandeur right here. He's okay, watch here now. You're going to see Werfel get busted right there. Boom. He needs to give it up. He finally gave it up, but he gave it up too late. Yep. Pretty exciting stuff, but the half is over. And at halftime, it is Florida 24, Florida State 17. And we'll be back. John Saunders and Todd Blackwood after this message and the word from our ABC station. Dodge Stratus and Dodge Ram have just received the prestigious J.D. Power & Associates Appeal Award. Stratus tied for most appealing entry mid-size car, and Ram receiving the award for the second year in a row as most appealing full-size pickup. The Appeal Award comes from the most knowledgeable automotive experts of all, consumers. Frankly, we're tickled. See the friendly Dodge dealer near you. If you want more computer for your money, you got to call us, the friendly folks at Gateway 2000. Pick up the phone and give us a call. Call now. Call now. Call now. I'm kind of nervous. Call now. Grab the phone. Give us a call. Pick up the... Dial, dial, dial. <laughs> dial. Right now. Gateway computers feature the Intel Pentium processor. So call 1-800-GATEWAY and ask for our free video. Call us today. You know, the stuff in here isn't nearly as unbelievable as some of the stuff in here. Like this tire ad, for instance. Wow, four tires for $79. But what kind are they? It doesn't say. And what about all the extras they charge you for? 
doesn't say. You think they're taking us for a ride? After Christmas, most tire stores have their so-called year-end clearance sales. But at Bell Tire, you always get the guaranteed lowest prices or it's free. Don't get taken for a ride. Get to Bell Tire. Nobody comes close. Nobody's closer. A man is charged with murder after he guns down a 17-year-old who is trying to steal his car. We'll have the story. Plus, we'll retrace Deborah Iverson's last steps before she was kidnapped and give you some tips on how to protect yourself. That's tonight after football. Dave Carter's dream was to own his own towing company. The bank said no. His credit wasn't up to their standards. But Worldwide said yes. I'm Andy Jacob, president of Worldwide Financial. If you're a homeowner and need cash for any reason, call Worldwide and we'll loan you the money right on the phone, 24 hours a day, even if your credit's bad. So call Worldwide right now at 1-800-807-YES and make your dreams come true. Worldwide Financial. Cash fast when you need it most. What you see reflected in the glowing screen is the human face of the technology that keeps your new vehicle running, carrying you and your loved ones safely, season in and season out. With warranties, genuine parts, and expert service, no one knows you and your car or truck better than the source. Your Detroit Auto Dealer Association members, proud presenters of Detroit's North American International Auto Show, to New Orleans. It's halftime of the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Florida with a touchdown lead over Florida State. We talked about it before the first time they met. Sometimes games don't live up to the hype. This time they did. Last time they did. Steve Spurrier challenged his team, but it looks like Florida State was ready to respond. Yeah, I think they both have responded to the challenge, and really the big guys for each team has started to make the big plays. Now, for Florida, a key was, could they protect Danny Werfel? They moved him into the shotgun. That allowed him to get rid of the ball quickly, as you see on this touchdown here. Danny Werfel also helped himself in the first half a couple times scrambling out of the pocket buying a little extra time and then making the throw very good move by Steve Spurrier putting him in the shotgun if you look at Werfel's numbers in the first half 13 of 24 246 two touchdowns he was knocked down 10 times he was sacked a couple times but in the shotgun he was especially effective 12 of 21 229 yards and two touchdowns now Warwick Dunn, on the other hand, he was a key factor. Could Florida stop him? They did a great job of containing him in the first half. But then right before the half, under a minute, Warwick Dunn finally gets on track, becomes a factor. But for the first half, eight carries, 28 yards. He only averaged three and a half yards every time he carried the ball. Florida State obviously in the first half said, we're going to put the ball in the hands of Thad Busby. He's the guy who's going to have to win the game for us. And Thad Busby responded exceptionally well. You see him throwing a touchdown here, eluding the pressure. Busby, 216 yards in the first half. His best game of the entire season, he threw for 316 in the entire game. So Thad Busby has responded to the challenge. Bob Greasy said he was going to have to step up. Thad Busby has stepped up. He has done that indeed in the second half straight ahead. But when we come back, we're going to have a conversation with Steve Spurrier. Right now, one of the most interesting people you ever want to sit down and talk with. The faces on the sideline only tell part of the story. For a half century, the spirit of the Seminole has been pervasive at FSU. It's found in classrooms where great teachers challenge gifted minds, in a faculty that has included five Nobel laureates. It is a spirit found in graduates who reached the greatest heights, yet returned to their roots and in the generosity of alumni who give back to the school that nurtured their youth. In theater, dance, and music programs ranked among the nation's top 10. In a magnet lab without equal in all the world, it is alive in community service. In the brighter days students bring to the old and the sick. We are Seminoles at Florida State University. sales event. Buying a new Nissan has never been easier. 
The Nissan year-end sales event ends January 6th. Welcome to the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Many of you might be wondering, who is Nokia? Well, did you know that Nokia is the largest cellular phone manufacturer in Europe? And that we are the second largest supplier in the United States? So how did Nokia grow so fast? It was a lot of things. But most important is our focus on making technology easy to use. Because our business is about connecting people. On behalf of the over 30,000 Nokia employees throughout the world, we would like to wish you a happy and prosperous new year. Enjoy the game. Welcome back to the Nokia Sugar Bowl. What a terrific first half. Right now, the Gators of Florida leading Florida State 24 to 17. At the beginning of the telecast, we talked about the rivalry between these two coaches. Now, Steve Spurrier may not have the national championship that Bobby Bowden has, but what he does have is the attention of the entire college football world. Right now, you have to consider him the most talked about man in the game. We talked about this before we actually started rolling the cameras, that uh, Steve Spur is not the same as your average college football coach. How do you see yourself as different from other coaches? I probably don't talk like all the coaches talk. I'm different in that I sort of yell at the quarterback sometimes. Uh, used to be you can yell at the left guard or the linebacker or receiver or somebody, but don't ever yell at the quarterback. My style of coaching is, is to yell at everybody. And uh, if I'm going to yell at the right tackle or the receiver or somebody messed up. I, I got to yell at our quarterback also to make it consistent. Everybody that messes up a whole bunch of the coaches, get on them a little bit. That's called coaching. Other than that, uh, we all compete as hard as we can, and uh, I don't know how I'm different, really. Do you think maybe sometimes that's why um, people perceive you as somebody who's real hard, real tough to get to know because of your competitiveness? John, I don't know exactly uh, what the perception out there is. Uh, you know, one or two writers may write something a little nasty and critical, and some people think that uh, they all write that, which is not true. I, I get, I think I get way too much good publicity, to tell you the truth. As far as uh, being good friends uh, with all the coaches in the SEC, gosh, uh, those guys keep voting me coach of the year. So the perception, I think, uh, uh, um, about me is uh, people that look for something critical or nasty, sure, you can find it in anybody if you want to, and so they can... They say, well, he yells and screams or does that all the time, but uh, uh, I, don't, I certainly don't think I do or else uh, our players wouldn't play as hard as they do. You had a disappointment last year with a chance to win the, the title. I mean, it seems that people, the media especially, sit back and say, well, if this guy doesn't win it, perhaps his life's going to be empty. It doesn't seem like that fits you. No, John, it really doesn't. I don't know how the voting's going to go, and uh, I'm one of those coaches that never been a politician for votes. And uh, we've been very appreciative. Gosh, we were voted number one for about two months this year. And I don't know that we're the best team, and I don't know who's the best team until we have a playoff system. What would be your formula for this playoff? I'd get 16 teams uh, and run it down. 16, 8, 4, 2. And uh, nobody could complain. Uh, the game would be won or lost on the field. You wouldn't have to worry about voting and scheduling or anything. That's the way all the other sports in America determine their big champion is to play it down, have a tournament, uh, and I'll always believe that. When you look at um, what you have done at Florida, obviously you have to have tremendous satisfaction out of it. Is there a point here you think where maybe you, you're not challenged anymore? John, who knows what will happen down the road, and, and I, I sort of believe that a person should not use those words never and always uh, in, in sentences. Uh, right now, I feel like I've got the best coaching job in America. But who knows what will happen two, three, four, five years down the road. Uh, but I certainly hope to be here, you know, through 2000 and maybe longer. Who knows? But again, uh, I think we all just evaluate our situation and, uh, and go from there uh, really constantly all, all throughout the years. Todd, another reason he says he's different, he says, hey, I'm like a basketball coach. I'm in your face, but that's me, and he's not going to change it. Yeah, and I really like him because he shoots from the hip when he talks to you and the way he calls plays. And as a former quarterback, I love how creative he is. And tonight's a perfect example. He's kept Werfel in the shotgun, and then he's mixed the protections around using no backs, one back, some two back with the shotgun. Really a great move on the part of Steve Spurrier. I mentioned he doesn't have the national championship. Well, right now he's a half away from that with a seven-point lead. Well, Burger King Corporation and its National Franchise Association 
nation is proud to congratulate America's finest scholar athletes for their outstanding achievement in the classroom, on the field, and in the community. During the 1996 season, Burger King donated $1 million to 100 colleges and universities across the nation in all collegiate athletic divisions, honoring scholar athletes who accepted the challenge to make a difference with their college experience. In just two short years, Burger King has committed $2.3 million in scholarships. As a proud sponsor, the College Football Hall of Fame in South Bend, Indiana, Burger King Corporation and its franchises congratulates their 1996 class for a job well done. Speaking of jobs well done, a tremendous first half. It's a seven-point game. Back after this. Nissan year-end sales event. Buying a new Nissan has never been easier. The Nissan year-end sales event ends January 6th. A new set of academic standards for freshmen is now in effect. To practice, play, and receive an athletic scholarship, freshmen will need a minimum grade point average in at least 13 core courses in high school and a corresponding minimum score on the ACT or SAT. Ask your coach or guidance counselor about the new sliding scale and requirements. Prepare yourself now. Want to play? Know the rules. This message provided by the NCAA. When it comes to universities, what matters most? Teaching? Research? public service? When it comes to universities, what matters most is performance. The University of Florida. You want to play sports at an NCAA Division I or II school? You must be certified by the NCAA Initial Eligibility Clearinghouse. Get one of these student release forms from your coach or guidance counselor and send it to the clearinghouse. Remember, if you're not certified, you can't compete as a freshman in Division I or II. For more information, call toll-free 800-638-3731. Want to play? Know the rules. This message provided by the NCAA. This gentleman is Greg Smith, Lutcher, Louisiana, construction superintendent. He will have, right now, one chance to throw a football through a one-foot square target to win $1 million. He's the finalist in a promotional contest sponsored by Nokia, the title sponsor of the Sugar Bowl game. He never played organized football. He got some tutoring from Archie Manning. You know who Archie Manning is. Well, Archie this morning did this with it and said there you are my man now go ahead and whoop that thing through there Bob Greasy threw it 11 times yesterday and never got it through the <laughs> hole so now we're ready to go and here is Lynn Swan thank you Keith I'm with Archie Archie tell me how your students going to do here well Greg made a couple of practice land he's a left-hander now he's not Ken Staver or Boomer Sison but uh, uh, I, I, it's really exciting that he's been going for a million dollars I really hope he makes a great okay. guy too now, now, Greg, tell me what's going through your mind right now. Well, I just, I need to block all this out. I need to block out the crowd and the cameras and just aim, focus on the hole and try to put it in. Now, Bob Greasy always tells me you're supposed to aim a little bit higher. Are you going to aim a little higher or just aim at the hole? I'm just going to draw a little bit bigger circle around the, around the box in my mind and just aim for that. All right, good luck to you, Greg, for a million dollars. And Keith, he hasn't had a chance to warm up. He wasn't allowed to touch a football once this game began, so it's a cold shot. Okay. And here it comes. It's about 12 yards. He's going to throw it. Depending on where he plants and throws from. If he can throw it through there, it's a mill. Not quite. Just a little high and outside. But good try. Did he get something out of it anyway? A critique now from Mr. Greasy. 
Well, he's got the ball up good. I like his forearm right there. He's got the, the, the fingers on the laces. He just doesn't get a good spin on it. But, you know, for not having warmed up and not throwing a lot of balls, that ain't real bad. I would tell you, about a foot or two to the left that he would have made it. Vince won again. Well, Greg, you didn't get the million dollars, but you do get a check for $5,000. Congratulations. Thank you. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank uh, all the wonderful folks at Nokia and uh, their associates. They've been just uh, wonderful. We've had a great time while we've been here, and I don't feel like there's any loss at all. It was an opportunity of a lifetime. And once again, thanks to Nokia and all their people. Well, Larry Paulson of them wanted to give you the million dollars. Did you know that? That would have been fine with me. <laughs> okay, Keith. All right, 20. So it is done. We are at halftime. He didn't get his million, but he got 5,000. Florida leads at halftime, 24 to 17. We'll be back after this word from our ABC station. The city's Los Angeles. My name's Friday. Bill and I were watching TV, wondering how to take off those pounds we put on over the holidays. It's the Service Merchandise Family Fitness Fair, the largest assortment of everything you need to stay fit, all at guaranteed low prices. We went to Service Merchandise to check it out. Yes, officers. What you need is a treadmill, like Proform Space Saver Thin Line. Is that right? The Proform Space Saver Thin Line is the world's most compact, easy-to-fold, full-featured treadmill. The Family Fitness Fair. It'll get you in shape fast. And those are the facts. Channel 7 Health Report with Doris Bisco, brought to you by Mercy, working together for a healthy community. There are precautions you can take to minimize your risk of catching a cold this winter. Wash your hands before handling food. Don't share dishes or utensils. Don't kiss, hug, or shake hands with people who have colds. And get rid of all those used tissues quickly. There are more than 200 types of cold viruses out there, so take a little extra care to be healthy this winter. What are you afraid of? Are you afraid of breast cancer? Afraid you just can't quit? Are you afraid of the asthma medications you give your child? Or that you may have waited too long to have children? What are you afraid of? Care Choices covers a variety of routine medical services without hassles or extra costs because we don't believe this should be among your fears. Care Choices HMO, breaking down the barriers to good health. How to stick to your New Year's diet resolution without overdoing it, after football. We're at halftime at the Nokia Sugar Bowl at the Superdome in New Orleans, with Florida leading Florida State by a score of 24 to 17. There have been five touchdowns scored here in the first half. More scoring, uh, perhaps, than some might have anticipated. But Furrier's plan, obviously, of using the shotgun has, has worked pretty well. I think Steve has forced this game into an offensive game. He has forced Florida State to score more points by going to a shotgun. It's been very successful. He's throwing a lot of quick balls, but there's a lot of receivers open in that secondary. And there's a lot of people who can play run and catch, I'll tell you that. Here's a sample of some of it and some of the highlights from this first half of play in which the touchdowns were scored. I kill your catches the first one that sets Florida up in the first quarter, seven to nothing. This is a pass that Werfel gets away, sets up this Fred Taylor touchdown. That was a wounded goose and he got away with it. E.G. Green comes back for Florida State. Make it 17 to 10. This is pretty cute right here, isn't it? Unbelievable. Yeah, that's an artificial turf move right there. So Hilliard has a couple of touchdowns in the first half. Warwick Dunn uh, did the last counter for Florida State with this run. And that gives him some heart. It's got to pick up the whole Seminole team, Bob. Exactly. 
got him something, got him back in the ball game. Warwick Dunn, they got to try and get him into the ball game in the second half. Game. He's their heart and soul. Yep. But it's, it's, it's encouraging for Florida State that Thad Busby has played so well in the first half. Yeah, he's hung in and done very well, but Florida State is not going to win this football game unless Warwick Dunn starts doing something. They are not going to win a shootout between Busby and Werfel. No. They need to control the ball, get, get Warwick Dunn in the ball game, and they really need to get to Werfel and have their defense, defense create some turnovers and some field position. They have not had the best of the field position in the first half. Looking back over the span of the season now, Florida sat there on top of the heap for such a long time, 10 weeks. They went up to Tallahassee, and Florida State beat them by three. Now you get the rematch here. Arizona State fell in the Rose Bowl. All of a sudden, we've got a circumstance here where there's going to be some feeling and some debate as to which team will wind up being your champion. you got to figure, since Florida State is number one, and if the Gators could beat them, then they would ascend to the number one spot. Then Steve Spurrier has never won a national championship. So, but going back over the season, it, it's funny how things, you need a little help once in a while to enjoy good fortune. And, There's and, no question about that. And Florida has had some good help lately. To even to get into this game, Texas beat Nebraska yep. in the uh, Big 12 championship game to allow them to get in there. And that was a play of some daring do from John Makovic that uh, startled Nebraska and resulted in the win as much as anything. They were fourth down and one in their own territory. John calls uh, to go, and they come up with this big play, and they went on from there to, uh, to score the touchdown and went on to beat Nebraska. And then Florida wouldn't be in this position that had, had, had not Arizona State lost yesterday uh, to Ohio State in the Rose Bowl That's because right. they were the number two team. Now, you would think that if Florida wins this ball game, they have every right to say, hey, we're on top. I don't know that I would debate it, would you? But they played, they played a tough schedule. They went to Tallahassee and only lost to Tallahassee, who was ranked, I think, number two at the time. Uh, only lost to them by three points. Now they, they beat, if, if they would win this game, Florida would win, beat the number one team on a neutral field at the end of the ball game, at the end of the season. They would have won their last ball game and probably by all rights be the number one, have uh, one number one team. The bowl of the dome covered by youngsters participating in the halftime uh, festival. And here are your halftime stats. Not a lot of rushing in this ball game, passing big time, big numbers for a ball game, but they're only for halftime. Penalties, 11 for uh, Florida has been huge. Look at, the, look at the average starting position. Florida has averaged starting at the 40-yard line. Florida State at their own 21. Gators coming back into the stadium. We've had a, a, a lot of rhetoric go on uh, between November 30 and uh, this game tonight. But I thought one of the best lines of the whole thing came out of Steve Spurrier, whose uh, dad is a minister, Presbyterian minister, and uh, Danny Werfel's uh, dad. John is a chaplain in the Air Force, uh, stationed at Eglin Air Force Base. And uh, Steve was discussing this late hit business uh, involving Daddy, and he, he said at the initial news conference over here in New Orleans, he said, Daddy is one of those New Testament fellas. He, after he slapped upside the head, he, he said, turns the other cheek and said, Lord, forgive them. They know not what they do it. He said, me? I'm an Old Testament guy. You spear me in the head, I'm going to spear you back. <laughs> so, so there's been a lot of Here's things going on. First half uh, numbers, uh, Werfel, uh, 246 yards, uh, two touchdowns. Uh, Taylor didn't do much rushing, and Anthony and Hilliard uh, did most of the receiving. Defense, uh, Lawrence Wright again with six tackles. The last game, the time these two played, he had 18 tackles. Seminoles about to make their re-entry into the stadium at, after the halftime break. Danny Werfel cranking up, and Danny uh, was turned upside down enough to remember the first half. They got him quite a bit 
Through 28 passes, Keith. He was hit 14 times. He got knocked down 12 of those four, uh, 14 hits. A couple of sacks. Florida in the first half, their possessions. Scored the first time they had it, the third time they got a field goal, and then the fifth time, a touchdown. You can see the number of plays, they, and they don't keep it very long. They're either going to give it up or they're going to score. Sort of a deliberate pace here with the Seminoles coming back into the Superdome after the halftime break, and now they pick it up and come on out. Waiting for the flag man to get in front. I would imagine that there was some pretty good conversation uh, from the head man in the Florida State locker room because I don't think that he's satisfied that they're playing with as much intensity as they're going to have to. To look at Florida State, the numbers, Busby had a nice uh, first half, no interceptions, 216 yards and the one big touchdown. Done, not a lot of yardage at the one TD late. Green and Cooper with the receiving, and Capers, the corner, led him with four tackles. The possessions for Florida State, they scored two of the last three times they had the ball going into halftime. A lot of possessions there, as you see. Now a moment with Lynn Swan. Thank you, Keith. I talked to Bobby Bout, and he said what we have to do in the second half is protect our passer. He says they're ganging up on the run. That's why they have not been putting the ball in Warwick Dunn's hand a lot, but they have to protect their passer to throw the ball. He also said he believes that the Florida team is getting tired. Now, keep in mind that Daryl Bush and Andre Cooper both suffered from cramps in the first half. They had to have IV fluids before they could come back out in the second half. He says on the on the defensive side, what's really getting to him is the fact that Florida's beating Florida State in third and long. He says if they need 16, let's give them 12. Let's not give them 16. He says our defensive backs are playing bump and run. All right, they're running, but they're not bumping. He says he's going to bring them up closer, get some hands on the body to make sure he puts a bump back in the bump and run team. Yeah, they could. They haven't done that. You're right. You, you it became very clear, and particularly when uh, Green has broken loose for two big plays and. Uh, uh, I think you're playing with poison, though, when you get up oh, near those yeah. guys. You're right. You're right. They are so quick. <laughs> Anthony has been controlled in the first half. Now, if you can, if you can handle him that well in the second half, you're you're going to have a chance. But he's dynamite. Ike Hilliard, on the other hand, has had a big, big first half. Hilliard scored two touchdowns, and uh, he had four catches for 131 yards. That's a big half. Scott Bentley, number three, the senior from Aurora, Colorado, will kick it off for Florida State. The Gators will have the uh, first possession of the second half. Anthony and Williams are waiting. Riddell Anthony is 15. Elijah Williams is 25. Keith Jackson, Bob Greasy, then Swan, and here we go with the second half. Two yards deep in the end zone, Anthony. Across the 30 and out to the 32. So the Gators begin with pretty good field position for their first possession. And they lead in the ball game by a score of 24 to 17. Danny, 13 of 26, 246 yards, two touchdowns. He was sacked twice. And if you're interested, uh, he was... Uh, had one penalty called on the defense for roughing the pass. Let's put it on the 31. It's close to there. Elijah Williams in the backfield. He's got the ball. Tries a sweep. And he's Pollard. Trying to come around the corner by Renard Wilson. He did get something out of it. A couple of yards. It'll be second down. Big country. His father owns a farm. And uh, when he was younger... One of the calves run into the pond, and his mother was afraid that he was going to drown. His dad was yelling at him, and he was really worried more about Renard strangling the calf than he was about Renard getting out of the... He wasn't worried about Renard getting out. Second down and about seven. Tough place to check off at the line of scrimmage. It's 
quite noisy. Ball is handed away to Taylor. Taylor's up near the 35 for about a yard. So they'll be looking at third down and about six. Interesting that Florida comes out the first two plays of the second half are running plays. Remember the first game, the third quarter was about nine or 10 or 11 punts by both teams, Keith. Nobody did anything offensively in the third quarter. Hanel Spain now comes out at a defensive tackle as they go to third down and six. Gary Spires moves in. Bush steps right up onto the line of scrimmage. And they loop and get Danny Werfel and there's a penalty flag. You got Wilson and Bolware who loop from the outside. They get pretty good pressure up the middle. And they sacked him. Let's see about the flag. Holding, Holding. Florida. On the offense. They'll decline that. It'll bring up fourth down and they'll have to punt it. Pretty good uh, first series for the Florida State defense. Yes, it was. Two runs and a pass by the Gators. And like Lynn was saying, Bobby Bowden said their corners were going to get up and jam them. They did that, and they were covered, well covered. Fifth punt of the night for Robbie Stevenson. Peter Warwick, number nine, is a wide receiver. Redshirt freshman from Bradenton. He's standing back on the 35. He's got a backup for that one for the 25. Comes back to the 42 with a good return of 17 yards on a 45-yard punt. January 10th in theaters everywhere. To get at all the vegetables in New Tostitos Ultimate Garden Salsa, they had to invent a more maneuverable chip. Introducing bite-sized Tostitos Tortilla Chips. And Ultimate Garden Salsa. Mm -hmm. in the highest maximum V8 payload. What tough does. Tough is what tough does. The new Ford F-150. More trend truck of the year. Built Ford tough. What if everything in your house made you sick? Almost everything in the world. Everything. These people say it happened to them. Imagine or real. 2020 ABC Friday. Starting senior linebacker number 44 for Florida, James Bates is not on the field, not back for the second half. He's in the locker room. He has a concussion. They said they're going to continue to evaluate him. He may come back, but right now he's not even on the field, Keith. Whoa, that's a loss. That's not good news. Uh, uh -uh. He's got a concussion. He is the leader, the defensive leader of that uh, Gator defense. Wayne Thomas, number 52, steps in to assume his position at the middle spot. He's a junior from Jacksonville. Busby back, pretty good protection, passes away to the sideline, passes good to Dunn. Warwick Dunn will move it down to about the 45-yard line on the Florida side of the field and make it a first down for the Seminoles. Well now. After the break, they do some adjusting. They come out, they've been awfully good. That first play, Warwick Dunn motions out of the backfield. They get him the ball on the flank, one-on-one. -on -one. And he's a bundle up one on one. Going back to the eye. Back to Dunn. 
He's right at the line of scrimmage and brought down Lawrence Wright, number four, that strong safety. He's just right up there on the line of scrimmage so much of the time. Yeah, Lawrence Wright, uh, he made 18 tackles in the first game between these two. He won the uh, Thorpe Award, Keith, yep. as I know you know, is the best defensive back in the country. Very active in the Miami community. He's involved with the Wright Track Program, which is does a lot for youngsters in that area. D. Feaster checks in now at the tailback spot, relieving Warwick Dunn. A little sprain, maybe, of the ankle. The pass is thrown hard and a little bit behind. And here's the penalty call coming up. Wayne Messam was held by Antone Lott, and Lott gets flagged for it. So that's a 15-yard penalty and a first down for Florida State. From behind the defense, nice lane to throw through. And his left oh, arm yeah, on there. You see number hooked. nine, Lot. He had him hooked. Yeah. The official right behind him, the back judge, is looking right at the wide receiver and the corner on that side. That is the 12th Florida penalty in the ballgame. They came into this game with 1,095 yards in penalties. Well, they are averaging 10 penalties a game. They've already had 12 penalties right now. So they're over their allotment. They just play through them. It doesn't matter to them. They just, it's just the way they play. They're used to them. First down, all at the gate of 35. Busby back, gets it off. Got air under it, mess them down in the corner, out of bounds, incomplete. Little too far. He got away from Lot, though, and he made the catch, even though out of bounds. It's just a little bit too high. He just threw it too much air under the ball. If you're going to throw it that high, you got to throw it much sooner. Well, let's find more about Dunn here from Lynn Swan. Well, Keith, he's got a cramp in his leg, and so they're working him on, working on him on the sideline. Uh, nothing more serious than that. Just trying to stretch it out. Kate, that's good news for uh, Seminole fans. Second down and 10, 24-17. Florida has the lead. We're in the third quarter, 11-49 to play in the quarter. And time here called by Florida State. Well, we'll be right back. This is Ford Escort. Did you know that it's new? If you knew that it's new, did you know the wagon's new too? The engine is new, the suspension improved. A safety cell protects but stays out of view. It's quieter inside to shush out the out. But for those who simply must twist and shout, there's premium speakers on a new stereo. So you can get every note and get it to go. This Escort is great. This Escort is nice. This Escort has a very sensible price. So why not check out the newest Escort this season? We've given you every rhyme and rhymed every reason. Maybe you think only those fast lane types need a Nokia cellular phone. Bill, Bob, I'm running late. Well, now Nokia's making cellular phones so easy. So, uh, cover for me during finger paint? They're practically child's play. Right, it's science day. With Nokia's big screens, easy to find names and numbers, and sleek designs. Gooch, could you handle sandbox for me? I'm like in a four-lane parking lot. We're talking rest period before I get there. Oh, I forgot my show and tell. So now we can all be in the fast lane. Nokia, Europe's leading cellular phone, also made in America. Connecting people. Once a single library held the knowledge of the world. Centuries later, data was still controlled by an elite few. Then Oracle freed everyone to work with databases. Today, Oracle is putting the knowledge of the world online. It will forever change our markets and our culture. Where do you learn about companies whose future is as limitless as our hunger to know? Exactly. Nasdaq.com ABC Tuesday. Everything changes for Bobby and Diane. I'm so scared. In one split second <laughs> of revenge. An all-new blue ABC Tuesday. Warwick Dunn has returned to the backfield for Florida State. Got a little stretched out the crimp. Yep. Tonight he has uh, nine rushes for 29 yards. First game was much more uh, productive. from the 35 to the mold. Downs in motion. And he got flags and whistles. 
And the penalty is going to be on uh, somebody along the left side of that offensive line for wiggling before the snap. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. Five-yard penalty and it remains second down. ABC Sports coverage of the 1997 Nokia Sugar Bowl brought to you by NASDAQ. Providing vital investment information to America's individual investors. So put the ball back at the 40 and make it second down and 15 now. Checking off. Gators are coming. Give it a pull there. And he runs it inside the 35 down to near the 33. Shea Showers was bold and brave enough to go underneath that moving mountain and bring him down. Well, that was a nice check off. The Pooh Bear is 285 and uh, doesn't carry the ball very often. They had a little Warwick Dunn blocking for him and he did a nice job. Showers only weighs 171 pounds. He's that spot remaining. <laughs> you got to give the ball to those big fullbacks every now and then just to keep them happy. On third down, Busby throws it. And it is caught. But it is not a first down. Andre Cooper with a fine catch. I mean, the coverage is there. Good Wary made a good play. He came back to get it. Wary was on the coverage, and he had to come back. Couple yards short, so they'll go for a field goal. It'll be a 45-yard try by Scott Bentley. He's one for one tonight. He hits from 43 yards. This one is on its way. Plenty of leg. And it's good. And so the Seminoles make it a 24-20 ball game. People start communicate mind to mind. Not black to white. There are no genders. Not man to woman. There is no age. <laughs> Not young to old. There are no infirmities. Not short to fall. Or handsome to fall away. Just thought to thought. Idea to idea. Uninfluenced by the rest of them. There are only mine. Only mine. What is this place? This place? Utopia? No. No. The internet. The internet. The internet. Where minds, doors, and minds open up. It's a nice place. This place called the internet. <laughs> Is this a great time or what? Ford Ranger has always been able to adapt to just about any environment because Ranger gives you a wide choice of body styles and an incredible variety of available features like anti-lock brakes and a whopping 4-liter V6. So, no matter how the scenery changes, you can fit in without ever blending in. Ford Ranger, the best-selling compact pickup in America, starting at just 10880. The Nokia Sugar Bowl. This ABC Sports exclusive brought to you by Nokia, proud sponsor of the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Nokia, connecting people. And the Ford F-150, strength after strength after strength. Scott Bentley ready to kick it off for Florida State. As the Seminoles pull within four, it's a 24-20 ball game. Mike Hilliard and Elijah Williams are deep for the Florida Gators. These are two very talented football teams, but the thing I like about both of them is they got fit, boy, they won't quit. They keep clawing and scratching. That's a yard deep in the end zone by Hilliard. Pretty good lick laid on Mr. Hilliard up at the 22-yard line. There, the Gators will go to work. Two 
two Heisman Trophy winners right there talking. There's a look at what Werfel has done tonight. We've had 29 pass plays. He's been hit on about half of them and knocked down 13 times, three sacks. And most of those pass plays have been from the shotgun formation. Well, he didn't get that two extra yards, did he? They put it right on the 20. And Danny starts out of the shotgun. And here comes Metris Boulware and Wilson, and they flush him. Now he throws, and it is just over the head of Ike Hilliard. Ike being covered by James, no, by Byron Capers. That was just good coverage downfield. Capers and the rest. Werfel was scrambling around, buying some time, giving all of his receivers a little more time to get open, and nobody did. That's four plays for Spurrier in the second half, and really nothing is, uh, he had two running plays on the first possession, and then a pass, and now the first play is a pass here. He needs to get something going. Look out for the blitz here. Look at Smith creeping up. Now he drops off, passes away, and thrown over the head of the intended receiver, Nathan Skareem. It's a nice fake. They faked Danny out. The safeties were itching up like they were going to come. Thought he had to get rid of the ball quickly. There's a, there's the winner right there. There's a look from the shotgun. The new award this year, the Frank Royals Award goes to the top assistant coach of the year, and Mickey Andrews won that, Keith, and very deservedly, as you know. Great award. Assistant coaches have been overlooked too long. Yep. Werfel back. Passes away. It is caught by Riddell Anthony, but he is short of the first down. James Colsey took a shot at the interception. Didn't quite get it. Yeah. It's going to be fourth and short, and Spurrier's over there thinking about it. He can't Anthony, be thinking about it. You can't go for it on fourth down inside your 30-yard line, can you? <laughs> He's done it before. <laughs> He's done it before. But, you know, he just hates to get the ball up. He's only had the ball six plays. He's had it two possessions. He's been three and out both times. Second half. Robbie Stevenson, sixth punt, having a good night. Oh, that's maybe his best one. Oh, it runs all the way back inside the five, rolling dead. Look at this. Oh, holy smoke. Great kick. Deep mm Feaster -hmm. mm -hmm. pulled his hands away from it, didn't touch it. And the ball rolled all the way back to the two-yard line, and it's a 68-yard punt. Monday night on ABC, Torn Lope guests on a brand-new episode of Dangerous Minds, starring Annie Potts, then Harry Hamlin in his most surprising role. Michelle Green stars in the world premiere of Bads of Betrayal on the Monday night movie on ABC. So the Seminoles continue their poor field position. They've been in this fix a lot tonight. Exactly right, Keith. And you got to be careful down here. The Gators have six defensive touchdowns on the year. Look out! Ball thrown away. And I mean, he was just walloped by Johnny Rutledge back in the ball game. And you got a Seminole shaken up right on the goal line. There's a look at Rutledge, 58. Just comes through un, untouched. The referee is looking at the uh, the fish at the uh, at the quarterback. Dunn, he wants to get the ball to Dunn. That's where he was going with it. I think Dunn is the man that's on down on the field. Yeah, it is Warwick Dunn who is down on the field. So uh, they may be going back to that cramp the way they're like working it. on it. Yeah. It looks like it. Once you get a cramp started, and remember you're in the Superdome, so you're it's quite warm. 
And uh, once you get a cramp going, it's hard to get that thing out of it. You see the right come over and slap him on the rump because yep. everybody respects that kid. Not only as a football player, but yep. as a person. Well, those two guys, those two kids are good guys, too. Dunn and Wright. They've been going at this for four years. And uh, Feaster is in the ball game now, Keith. Normally, Rock Preston would be in, as you mentioned earlier. Preston academically ineligible. But when you don't have Warwick Dunn on your, in your backfield, you, you, you're, you're going without a wheel. You're missing something. There are no questions. Bugsby gets it away, throwing it deep down the sidelines, and it is incomplete. Almost <laughs> intercepted by Anton Locke. And I really think Locke would have intercepted it if, if he hadn't been hit by his own man. Laverne Coles, and he didn't, uh, he, he may have speed, but he he had, a lot was running right with him. Yeah, but watch this at the very end. Watch the uh, right from the right side of the screen is going to come in and knock the ball loose. Right here. And lot number nine gets up and starts yelling at him. <laughs> Uh, well, right, Wright's going to get up and says, if you hadn't knocked it loose, I could have caught it. <laughs> Gets up and starts yelling at him. <laughs> Those defensive backs don't get a chance to get many of them. Well, they try to run it with Feaster, and they get it out to the five, and now they turn it over to Sean Liss and the kicking team guys and say, bail us out again, will you? It is their sixth punt, and Liss has been over 40 all night. Let's go back to that last play. Now watch a lot, number nine. He thought he got a chance at interception. <laughs> Why'd you come over? I had that ball. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. Got to be careful. Steps back out of the end zone. It'll cost him two. but it's a tail dragger. If they let it hit the ground, it'll take off. Jacquez Green fields it at midfield. And look out! Inside the 25. Lifts the putter. Made the tackle. There's no question that the special teams for the Gators have stepped up big here tonight. Great field position all day long. For Florida. He does a smart thing here, stopping the ball from rolling. Now he gets all the way over to the sideline where he's got a little help, some white jerseys. Great field position. Fred Taylor is the running back. He's got the ball. He's inside the 10, and a penalty flag, and another one. It's got to be a late hit, Keith. Looks piling on, I think. Big 12 officials. Randy Crystal, the referee. Dead ball. Personal foul on the defense. It'll be a half the distance penalty with an automatic first down. That hurts. Well, well, state. I think Renard Wilson comes and piles on a little bit late. Right there. Yeah, that's that's a good call. So Fred Taylor is in there again as the running back. They're going to snap the ball from about the four-yard line, and Werfel goes up under center. Give it to Taylor. He'll move it down to about the two. You know, the big fellas in the middle, the Wadsworth, uh, Spain, Spires, uh, they've been pretty quiet the night, Bob. Yes, they have. That, uh, that offensive line, getting Mo Collins and uh, Zach Piller back at the tackles, have really done a nice job in that offensive line. 
second down and goal from the two. Taylor again, and this time he is hit behind the line of scrimmage by number 30, Chevin Smith, the strong safety. So Smith shows up at a critical time. Look at Chevin Smith right here. He's going to come in untouched. This is dangerous on the goal line. This could have cost a fumble if he would have got there a split second sooner. Ball is on the three. It's third and goal. Change the play. Too much time. Burn the clock. Was there motion? Yeah, motion, yeah. Is motion, was it? Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. Remains third down after oh. a five-yard penalty. That's, that's why college teams right. don't watch the guard next to the center. That's why college teams don't like to check off a lot, Keith, especially cold checkoffs where they're not expecting it because a lot of times when you check off, you change the snap count. Or when you change the play, the offensive linemen are burning. There's like smoke coming out of their ear holes. Oh, geez, what do I do on this play? And they move a little soon. Well, they don't want to miss this opportunity if they can help it. So Steve Spurrier calls time to talk. And we'll be back. Everywhere, February 7th. ABC Monday, a world exclusive. All right. <laughs> Tom Lokes' latest. For a long ride, for a long time. Can you hang with this dangerous mind? An event you can't miss. Really? On an all-new Dangerous Minds. And then, she was a big city cop looking for a fresh start. But what she found was... No one ever says no to me. You have no idea how powerful he is. Harry Hamlin, Michelle Green, Badger Betrayal, ABC Monday. An update on Ward Dunn. They took him into the locker room to give him fluids by IV, much like a couple of his teammates at halftime, Keith. Trying to get rid of a cramp that has incapacitated him here in the second half of play. So the five-yard penalty makes it third down, or third and goal from the eight-yard line. Back to the shotgun, Werfel's pass, a little quick pop, thrown in there, and it is cut down to Ike Pickard. That is his third of the night. Edmiston for the extra point. Goes back to an 11-point lead for the Florida Gators. 31 to 20 at 5.43 to play in the third quarter. Take a look. Uh, Spurrier spread you out. Two on this side. Two on the top. Hilliard is here at the top. He's just going to run a little bit of a slant. The formation spreads out the defense. The inside slot receiver goes up. The linebacker, Crockett, almost gets a piece of that ball. 
as you mentioned, Hilliard for the third touchdown of the game. Almost. I think that's what Bowden was uh, reacting to on the sideline. Wadsworth, 85, getting there at just a second too late. People ask me what, people ask me why he loves it. Took a timeout to get the right play on and barely got it in, he says. People ask me why Danny Werfel is so good. Keith, he, first of all, he makes good decisions. And secondly, he's got a tremendous touch on the football. Forget about mobility, forget about arm strength. He makes good decisions and he's got a great touch. Five yard line, Peter Warwick. Warwick. About the 23 on the return. 1966, he was the MVP in the Sugar Bowl. He's had his share of glories from uh, the city of New Orleans. Florida 18 score of the game. Played uh, back in those days in the old Tulane Stadium. Which is now gone. Back Tommy Bowden, uh, another of Bobby's sons, named the head coach recently at Tulane University here in New Orleans. From the 23-yard line, Busby pulls it down and takes off. And does a hook slide and gets it out near the 30. The pros can hook slide and escape punishment. Ruled up uh, exist in the college book. So look at starting field position, big in favor of Florida. That's a lot of that is special teams. College, if you slide, you're down already. You're down already. Yeah, you don't right. need anybody to touch you. Oh. Well, there's nothing there. They were coming, uh, four of them, and they. Reggie McGrew was the first one to get a piece of deep Easter. And they roll it back some. Bob Stoops, the defensive coordinator, doing a nice job. Shutting down the running game, taking away the bread and butter of Florida State, and forcing Busby to put it in the air. He is an intense young man, isn't he? Yeah, he's wired. Absorbed. Third down now and four from the 29. Busby's pass down the middle of the field into double coverage for E.G. Green, and it is incomplete. Two Gators defending, and so the Seminoles have got to kick it. Here's a look at the coverage. This ball is going to be thrown a little bit behind him. You see how far he got pushed to the inside of the field. The ball was a little bit behind him. I don't think uh, Busby expected him to be that far across, but he was jammed at the line of scrimmage. Green is standing back on the 30. Seventh punt of the night for Sean Lives. Good one. It runs Green back to the 22. And then he is tackled at the 27 by Jermaine Springer and penalty flag. They lead 31 to 20 with four minutes to play in the third quarter. 13 flags on the Gators for 91 yards. 21 flags all, and that's a pocket full of flags, I want to tell you. And out of the shotgun, hand the ball to Terry Jackson. And he got a quick start. And 
and he runs for what appears to be very close to a first down. Monday late night, politically incorrect, starting Bill Maher offers first night guests Roseanne Coolio, Ariana Huffington, and G. Gordon Liddy. Politically incorrect, Bill Maher premiering Monday after Nightline on ABC. They will measure. 339 remaining in the third quarter. Here's your attendance for the Nokia Sugar Bowl. It is a new Sugar Bowl record. 78,344. Tickets were a tough ticket, basically. Florida folks, of course, not too far away, and they braved the fog and came. Well, and, of course, it's a national championship game, and uh, and it's not a cheap ticket either. It's an expensive ticket. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Bobby's on the headphones talking to uh, Mark Rick, the uh, offensive coordinator, just giving him ideas. He doesn't call the plays anymore. He's just giving him ideas. Throw the ball, run it. How about some reverses, gimmicks? What are we doing? Go to Jackson for the first down. It was second and a half a yard, and he picked up a couple. And move it out to the 44, and there the Gators will move the chains and put up first down. Bush and Boulware, though they may have been a bit tender because of flu problems coming in, they have played most of the game. The Gator offensive line, though, has been the big difference I've seen in the ball game. Really has. This is Jackson and a penalty flag. Both the linesmen threw their flags on that play, so they both saw the same thing, apparently. Illegal formation on the offense. Here's Lynn Swan. Thank you, Keith. I'm with Jeff Mitchell, the man who would be starting at center for the Gators. Jeff, big improvement in the offensive line from the last game with Florida State. What makes the difference? Uh, you know, we got it, they're, you guys are playing great. We got the right schemes on. Uh, they're, they're picking up the protection. Uh, they just, you know, it, it's a one-on-one -on -one battle now. It's you know who's the better player, and uh, that's what's going to boil down to. Is it the extra work coming into this ball game for the center and the offensive line? Yeah, definitely. You know, we got a lot of young and experienced guys in there. They've been working hard. You got Donnie Young who's leading them and, and, and trying to coach them up extra. So you know, that, that always helps a lot. You're not in because of the ankle injury. You won't be able to make the combine. When will you heal up to give pro football your shot? Uh, hopefully about. Mark. I'll be able to run for the scouts and get a good time in there, I hope. All right, Jeff. Thank all you very right. much. Thanks, Lee. He's a good one. He third, really missed him. Third team All-American. Yep. On first down from the 39-yard line. Jackson again. He's running with abandon. Just letting it rip. Yeah. And he's on the Florida State side of the field at the 48-yard line. You've got defensive ends. Watch uh, Wilson, 55. When you've got defensive ends that come up the field hard, you hardly have to block them. Little draw play. Give it to the back. He's already gone. Collins now comes flying back to block, uh, but uh, the halfback is already gone. That's one of the things that Spurrier's doing, drawing draw plays inside those ends that are rushing wide. again he's going to have the first down at the Florida State 45 yard line there comes a time in every football game no matter how fancy you are though Bob where you just got to hunker down and play football and test each other mano mano and right now that's what the Gators are doing well the Gators were down coming out the second half the first two possessions they were three and out as you take a look at Warwick Dunn back on the sideline the Gators were three and out, and then they had that 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 great punt by Stevenson that backed Florida yep. State up. Yep. And then on the when Florida State kicked, they had that great return and got good field position and took that in to score. So it was the special teams that turned Florida around here in the second half. Wolfo gets the ball away. It's in drop. Two men had a chance to intercept it, and neither did. 
Mario Edwards was the second one to drop it. You get the opportunity, you've got to make the plays, Keith. Florida State is number one in the nation, ranked number one. They are undefeated, but yet their turnover ratio is zero. They've given the ball up as many times as they've taken it away. Bulware got through again, as you saw. And normally when you're first in the nation, ranked first in the nation, Keith, you're way up there in takeaways. You got to catch that ball. Somebody's got to make a play for Florida State. The defense in the first game made a lot of plays. Look out. Anthony is open. He's got some room. And they finally take him down at about the 16-yard line. First down, Gator. Bobby knows that things are kind of slipping away. Redell Anthony has caught touchdown passes in 11 consecutive games, an NCAA record this season. Mickey Andrews, whose defense is beleaguered right now, has called the timeout. He does not want the players huddled out on the field. He wants them at the sideline so he can talk to them. You can see they're tired. They, they just gave up. A, he just gave up an interception. Two of his defenders were battling the ball around. Should have picked it off going the other way. And now they're in deep trouble. Little slant. Work will throw it in quick over the linebacker and in front of the defensive backs. That's not an easy throw. Riddell Anthony has caught 11 passes. The last two games he's played, he caught 11 against... Florida State, and he caught 11 against Alabama. A minute 13 left in the third quarter. The Gators at 31 to 20. They're looking to increase it. And Florida State's defense worn out right now. Join us on America Online for live interactive play-by-play -play stats of today's game. That's keyword ABC Sports on America Online. Lynn Swan. I'm with John Warfel. John, you were telling me you're a little nervous watching your son out there play. Yeah, it's hard not to be nervous, but as they're running the ball like that and running the ball, that makes me less nervous. <laughs> when you saw the way he played that first game against Florida State, the kind of hitch, what was going through your mind as a parent? Oh, that's too many hits. It's too often you, you get worried that he's not going to walk away. Mm -hmm. But uh, he is, he's been getting up every time with a lot of prayers and, and a, lot of, a lot of weight lifting and making himself as tough as he can, but it scares you. All right, Keith. All right, thank you. John is an Air Force captain, and his dad, Wayne Young, got the wiggling, uh, Donnie Young got the wiggling around a little bit, I think, on that play, and uh, you've got a procedure call coming here. Got a little temper right there to cool down. Ball start on the offense. It remains first down. Donna Young is the offensive leader in that offensive line. He's got a lot of young guys around him. The fifth-year senior, all-conference player, the finalist for the uh, Outland Award. Tough player. No, don't want to be sassing him too much. 315 pounds. Ball comes back to the 21-yard line now, where it's first down and 15. Trips the bottom of the picture. That's three wideouts. You got Jackson, you got Green, and Anthony, and now they don't like what they've got, and you've got a timeout. to that previous play. That's the 96 at Spain and Young. They've been going at it all night. That's the 15th penalty on the Gators for 101 yards. And that 15 penalty ties the Super Bowl record held by the Miami Hurricane. When the helmet 
helmet comes off would seem to me that uh, no matter how severe your case of peak might be, one would be looking for a little solace from his pals. That'd be a hunting a place to hide without my helmet. Are you trying to say you're not going to go and get in any arguments, huh? <laughs> That's right. Werfel has found Hilliard three times tonight. This kid can really move. He'll be playing on Sunday next year. Well, it, it's been Anthony up until this point. The previous two games, it was the other receiver on the other side. Hilliard was kind of laying in the bushes, but tonight, it's Ike Hilliard. The talk is that uh, Anthony's uh, going to come out. Not much has been said about Hilliard, but... A game like this, under these circumstances, against the quality opponent, might have some influence. Well, he said the other day, Hilliard, that he, he was going to stay, but uh, never know. You have to notify. Uh, you have to notify the league, the NFL, by January the 10th. They're coming out. First and 15 from the 21 now. Jacques Green caught it, and somebody just launched him at the sidelines. The pass is complete. It's a good shot. Nobody even blocks the defensive end. The will still gets this ball off. Now watch this hit. Roy Saunders got most of that, and Lamont Green was there. It's a great example, though, Keith, of how the shotgun has worked to perfection here this evening. Nobody even blocked the defensive end. I think it was uh, Wilson. And he still got the ball off to the wide receiver. It's second down 11 from the 17. Handed off to Taylor. And the junior from Bell Blade is stopped pretty much along the line of the scrimmage. He's got one yard out of the play. Everything's got kind of ragged down here. Once they got down in the uh, door knocking area, He's got ragged. Third down and ten. You don't see many head coaches in college football calling their own signals to their quarterback out on the field. You got Anthony and Hilliard both down toward the bottom of the picture. Hilliard down the middle. Werfel takes off the other way, running for the corner, and he's in there. I think. Finally, he just pulled it down and ran as hard as he could and just made it into the corner. And it's Edmiston now for the extra point. seconds to play in the third quarter. Werfel putting on a clinic, Keith. And, and, and who better to do it? The Heisman Trophy winner throwing touchdown passes and then when it needs to be run in, everything's to the left side. There are no receivers to the right. Now watch as he breaks out to the right side. There's nobody out there. Werfel just says, I'll take it in myself. looking to our right side. That's where all the receivers are. And when you look that way, you pull all the defenders that way. There is nothing back to our left side, and he just gets it in. Well, Kevin Smith back there and Daryl Bush had looked upfield, and they were almost a full step late getting started when they said, what? Danny Werfel is running? And he scores.
Well, now, this thing can get lopsided pretty quick. That was, a, that was a big, answer. big, big score right there. Yep. Thirteen seconds to play in the third quarter. Matt Teague will kick off to Peter Warwick and Lee Feaster. Short. At the four, Feaster. Right around the 24-yard line with six seconds remaining in the third quarter. One of the biggest surprises of the entire postseason was Stanford's uh, lopsided win over I Michigan say, State. I was I was surprised. Yep. Really good football games though. This one was a little uh, bigger spread than I thought it would be, too. Tennessee over Northwestern. Feaster is the tailback. Warwick Dunn still not rid of that cramp that's been bothering him through much of the game. Pressure coming. Bugsby is nailed to the turf. Gets the pass away to Peter Warwick. And it is complete. And you've got two ticks remaining on the third quarter clock. Bowden has won 11 straight, 11 straight bowl games and has, has not lost in 14 bowl games. Willie Cohen's is hurt for Florida. Timeout on the field. Here's Lynn Swan. Well, Keith Warwick Dunn came out of the locker room. They brought him onto the field. I was told he came onto the sideline. He started to warm up, running up and down the sideline, and he cramped up yet again. He was carried off by two guys completely carried up off the ground back into the locker room to get more fluids by an IV and that's where he is at this moment. Keith, right. it makes me wonder uh, about the training of Florida State. Maybe maybe they worked him too hard. Maybe they didn't have the right fluids. Maybe they ate something because coming into the ball game before the game, Daryl Bush, the middle linebacker, and Peter Bulware, we were told, had been sick all day and then been on IV. Here's another cramp. Well, that's a that's a gator though. Yeah, it's a gator. Yep, but it's another cramp. But uh, it's warm for one thing. Yeah, it's warm. But I'm just saying, three of uh, Florida State players have had the same problem. He's gonna walk off. That's Jackson coming, and Busby does a nice job to get it away and complete the pass. And it is second down and three from 31. No, nope. no chance. He was looking at Andre Cooper. The ball is incomplete. 38-20 Florida leads. We'll be back with the final quarter of the Nokia Sugar Bowl after this message and the word from our ABC station. It's one of the most comfortable cars I've ever driven. People love talking about Ford Taurus. It's fun to drive. It really is. With Taurus, you fit in no matter what size you are. I'm big. I'm surprised by how much room there is inside it. Everybody in my family's big. Just turn the wheel a fraction of an inch. The car responds. There's a lot more room. It's designed so I don't have to search for anything. The seats feel like they wrap around you. It's a state-of-the-art car. Ford Taurus, the best-selling car in America, starting at 18545 This car is a pleasure to drive. I have fun. fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. ABC's Wide World of Sports presents the NutraSweet World Challenge of Champions. It's the season premiere Saturday, January 11th. Thrill of victory, agony of defeat. It all began with a scream over 911. In a town ruled by fear. No! You have to know the rules to survive. Don't answer the phone. 
Don't open the door. Don't try to hide. Who are you? The question is, where am I? Scream, the new thriller from Wes Craven, rated R. Now playing at a theater near you. Hmm? Excuse me. Hey. Pardon me. Hey. Nice doggy. Big Mac, please. Here's my coupon. Oh, sure, right away. Bubble bath? It's McDonald's coupon craze. Bring in any coupon from anywhere for anything and get a world-famous Big Mac sandwich for 99 cents or any delicious breakfast sandwich for 99 cents. So start clipping. Perm? <laughs> Have you had your break today? A police camera captures a deadly high-speed chase on video. See it after football. The final quarter of play from the 1996 Nokia Sugar Bowl. The Florida Gators, number three in the nation, leading number one Florida State by a score of 38 to 20. As Busby drops back and lets it go down the sidelines for Wayne Messam, and he's out of bounds, it is incomplete. Normally you would say, and there's no reason to think otherwise, that if Florida beats Florida State, the number one team, then the Gators would have rise back to the top of the national poll because number two, Arizona State, was beaten yesterday in the Rose Bowl by Ohio State in a magnificent college football game. So right now, down by 18 points, the Seminoles facing a punt at 14.54 to play in the game are getting somewhere near the desperate level if they are to reach back and pull this thing out. This will be the eighth punt of the night by Sean Liss. Florida has never won a national championship. This is a killer punt. I mean, it is enormous. It runs Jacquez Green all the way back to the 13-yard line. He escapes. And finally, he has run out of bounds across the way at about the 13. That was a 52-yard punt and a one-yard return. Bobby Bowden has a national championship. And the University of Miami, Keith, has four. That's in-state in Florida, and that's who Spurrier has to recruit against. This would be his first. And everything has gone just about what we said that Florida needed to do, and that is give Werfel time to throw and stop Warwick Dunn. And they have done both. They give a great big Waterford Crystal uh, trophy to the national champion given by Sears. And the fellow Karen yesterday almost dropped it. From the 13, it is Elijah Williams. Down hard at about the 11 yard line. Solid hit by James Posey, the quarterback. James Posey, tackle, a loss on the look at the numbers after three quarters. The big thing is at the bottom, the field position, big in favor of University of Florida. A lot of penalties. Second down and 12, the ball on the 11. Feminoles have got to pin them down right here. They have to in order to get decent field position. Wilson clutches him, Wilson's after him, Wilson got him. Bull wears on top of him. So both those defensive ends involved in that play, the it was Renard, Renard Wilson who made the tackle. That's the, this is the fourth sack of work for today. That defensive line, as we mentioned, led the nation in quarterback sacks this year. But it's Werfel that has gotten the best of them. Even though they have sacked him four times and hurried him a bunch of other ones, the shotgun has allowed him to get rid of the football and connect the, for some big plays. It is on the four-yard line, third and 19, and they've been dangerous on third and long all night. nothing there. So the Seminole defense does its job. It pins the Gators down and will force the punt out of the end zone and they should come out of this with good field position. But they are without Warwick Dunn right now. He 
Peter Warwick is back to receive the punt. Bobby Stevenson going to the end zone. There's Peter. Warwick, please. Last punt from Stevenson was a career best of 69. But it wasn't Peter. I think this one will be. He gets it out. He didn't kill it, but it's uh, caught by Peter Warwick. He splits the pursuers and comes back across the 35 to about the 33. And so the Seminole defense does its job and gives the offense the ball on the floor at the 33. Are you ready for some football? <laughs> the game has begun. Who has climbed the aircraft? That would be me. The clock is ticking. Crazy! This is bad. On January 10th. Miss, let's delay our flight. I'm calm. Get ready. <laughs> For the ultimate. I'm going to crash the plane. Touchdown. Happy New Year! Turbulence. Rated R. Starts January 10th. Butter, get this to our stockholders fast. But remember the bottom line. FedEx can deliver it in two days for about $8. UPS can deliver it in two days for about $6. Priority Mail can deliver it in two to three days for $3. Smart move, Budner. So, eight, six, three. What's your priority? Switch to Priority Mail from the U.S. Postal Service. It's the end of the year, and there's something special coming. It's the special delivery sale from the Clever Idea people in Plymouth. Right now, get Plymouth Voyager Plus with air conditioning and seven passenger seating at no extra charge. All for this low price. Lease Plymouth Breeze with zero down for $2.49 a month. Just $4.99 do it signing. Or buy the fun-loving Plymouth Neon Expresso for this great price. So be clever and get your presents early during the Plymouth special delivery sale. Only at your Plymouth dealer. I'm coming back. Arsenio. Right here. ABC. ABC. That's Danny Werfel on the sidelines. Florida State has the football at their uh, Florida 33. Desperately in need of a score. As you see, being number one in postseason play over the years has not been a particular advantage. The best field position of the game for Florida State. Going deep for the corner, and it is short, and there's whistles and penalty flags back at the line of scrimmage. Oh, it looks like it's going to be a penalty against Florida State. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. Five yards penalty. How many times? First down. We've had so many false start calls tonight. Must be a... a, a the noise in the dome. The noise in the stadium. It's gotta be. Gotta be. Uh, that, that ball was whistled dead even before the uh, snap. Receiver was open. If the ball would have been out there, it could have had a touchdown. Yep. He had a good step and a half on oh, the defender. Yes. So the ball comes back to the 38-yard line where this, it is first and 15. This is a very loud. It's, it's tough to hear in here. He just just the hum when, when you're not yelling and screaming. It's very loud. I remember playing in here a long time ago and had that problem. That's down the middle and he's lucky to get it back. Ball was thrown behind the receiver. Down the middle, E.G. Green. And it will be second down and 15. That ball was almost intercepted. Tiki Brown thought he could have that one if the ball was not going to deflect it. We're in the fourth quarter. Florida Number State. One. Florida State's in trouble. Needs to get something out of this drive, Keith. They're down by 18 points. What do you reckon the Arizona State Sun Devils are thinking about what to do? Yep. Line, no. 
No chance. Peter Warren was over there. So he was standing. The ball was thrown. He couldn't run it down. Kendra has not seen any action in this ball game. So you're going to see him some next year. Busby is 3 of 11 for 25 yards in the second half. I don't know that it's all Busby's ball. Well, both defenses have tightened up in the second half, uh, Keith, and they did that the first game also. Just good adjustment. Complete forward pass intended for Deep Easter out of the backfield. Wayne Thomas playing in relief of James Bates, the middle linebacker. Bates is out with a concussion for Florida. And uh, Thomas made the play. Well, they're going to go for a field goal here, and it's going to be a long one. It'll be a big one. He was kicking him from 55 yards in practice during the week. Well, his career long is uh, 49 against Maryland. And they're going to put this one down just beyond the 45. So this this will go in the books as 55 yards. And so good. short by a little bit and wide right by a little bit. inside the vehicle until the ride comes to a complete stop. Get a thousand dollars cash back or at least a new Plymouth Breeze for zero down and two forty nine a month. Four ninety nine do it sign. America's favorite fries. Go get them. Recently, an independent group of brewmasters and beer experts conducted a tasting of just about every major beer in the country. For four months, they sampled regular and ice beers for character, flavor, and overall quality. And in the end, the judges named one beer the best tasting beer in America, Old Milwaukee. So when you want the best tasting beer, now you know where to turn. Old Milwaukee. Her career was in full swing, but a tragic accident shattered everything. See how she's defying the odds. Inside Edition. Tonight, following Nightline on 7. As a result of the Seminoles going for the field goal and not getting it, the Florida Gators now get the ball back at their own 38-yard line. Good field position, and Danny Werfel back on the field goes under center. That was critical, Keith. Florida State had great field position and came away with no points. Jerry Jackson, the big back, is in there now, and he just hammers straight ahead and picks up about three yards out to the 41. It was Steve Spurrier that provided the outburst of rhetoric in the wake of the game in Tallahassee where he literally accused Florida State of late hits. Well, I think I, I think more than, yeah, that, and, and, and he almost accused Bobby Bowden, and Bobby took it personally. He says, he says the players are taught that way to hit late, and he he, he directed his comments at uh, Mickey Andrews and to uh, Bobby Bowden. I don't even think it influenced the outcome of this ball game at all. That pass is completed for a first down to Mike Hilliard, who had that a monster night for the Florida Gators. First down at the Florida State 28 yard line. I think what influenced the, the outcome of this game so far is the fact that they were in the shotgun. And Werfel has been able to get rid of the ball without getting the, the sack and the turnover. And the offensive line play picked up some. Yeah, they got two offensive linemen back, uh, Collins and Pillar. And the special teams played well. The special teams played well, and this field in this environment is much more conducive to their brand of ball. Nine Seminoles up on that line of scrimmage. 
not going to do much running with that many people up there. Gary Jackson tries and doesn't get anything out of it. I tell you, in the ball game tonight, seven catches, 150 yards, three touchdowns. And what was that thing you said uh, that they were going around town this week about the two coin flips? Yeah, they, they were going to have two coin. The joke was you got two coin tosses, one to see who got the ball and the other to see whether they're going to play touch or tackle. <laughs> It's tough when you come in here. There's, you know, it's it's inside. It's warm, 70 plus degrees. You put uh, 80,000 people in here. It's probably 80, 80 close to 80 degrees. That carry is uh, Terry Jackson. Of course, in the Superdome, uh, they have to have uh, air conditioners running all the time. The generators, uh, enormous amount of money invested in generators, so that if they have a power outage, they can keep the air conditioner running. You know what would happen if you, they suddenly went off, don't you? What would happen? You'd get an indoor thunderstorm. <laughs> <laughs> cool everybody off? Yep. Ball is on the 42 now for the Gators, third down and four. Florida State defense has been on the field a lot tonight. And been selling out on most of the plays tonight. Stay with the run. It's Jackson, he's gone. Touchdown. 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 42 yards. in that offensive line. Taylor does the rest. Maybe you think only those jet set types need a Nokia cellular phone. Hi, it's me, Flight's Delayed. Well, now Nokia's making cellular phones so easy. Late, late. Can I skip my bath? They're practically child's uh -huh. play. Attention, Flight 11 is delayed. Uh, can I call you back? With Nokia's big, easy-to-read screens, last number redial, and sleek designs. No, don't hold dinner. I'm eating my body weight in hot dogs. No, wait up. you got to tuck me in. So get set to join the Jet Set. Nokia, Europe's leading cellular phone, also made in America. Connecting people. Let's get real. Brakes stop your wheels, but tires stop your car. Goodyear AquaTread 2 has a deeper, wider aqua channel than the original AquaTread to sweep water away for outstanding wet traction. AquaTread, only from Goodyear. It's the end of the year, and there's something special coming. It's the special delivery sale from the Clever Idea people in Plymouth. Right now, get Plymouth Voyager Plus with air conditioning and seven-passenger seating at no extra charge. All for this low price. Lease Plymouth 3s with zero down for $2.49 a month. Just $4.99 due with signing. Or buy the fun-loving Plymouth Neon Expresso for this great price. So be clever and get your presents early during the Plymouth special delivery sale. Only at your Plymouth dealer. Two ex-presidents. It's an honor, sir. Want to run the country. You think that was the tires? But is the country ready for them? And the critics think it's hilarious. My fellow Americans. Rated PG-13. Now playing. The Nokia Sugar Bowl. This ABC Sports exclusive brought to you by Nokia. Proud sponsor of the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Nokia. Connecting people. Plymouth, one clever idea after another, that's Plymouth. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. And Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth. The Florida 
Gators leading 45 to 20. Kick it off. It's cold from the one. And out of bounds up around the 22. The Gators have run off 21 unanswered points to lead by 25. Tuesday night on ABC, we invite you to start the new year with a brand new episode of NYPD Blue. Jimmy Smith and Dennis Fran starring in an all new Blue Tuesday. Think back about a month ago, about 33 days when uh, Florida and Florida State played. Yep. Florida was number one in the country and undefeated. Yep. They got beat and dropped to number four. Everybody else in front of them was undefeated. Right. Except Nebraska, they had a loss. Then Nebraska got beat. Incomplete pass. Then Nebraska got beat and dropped below, and Florida moved up to three. And then Arizona State got beat yesterday. And Florida now moved up to two, theoretically. And now they play the number one team, and now they're back... They beat Florida State, now they're back up to the top. What if they would have dropped from one to five behind Ohio State? In the rankings. Well, I think their long tenure is number one, which lasted 10 weeks, so there's certainly something of an influence there. And I think losing on the road at Tallahassee yeah. in a close game, yeah. Well, the teams, if Florida goes ahead and wins this, and I right now don't see any particular reason why they shouldn't, 45 to 20, you're going to have Florida State, Florida, BYU, Arizona State, and Ohio State all with one loss. And uh, the team that uh, would uh, possibly be in a posture, the only team I think really to be in a posture of challenging the Gators' claim for number one might be Ohio State. And I don't think they will get a vote not both do that. That's Melvin Pearsall, who finally sees the ball for the first time tonight, the tight end, and has a big play out of it, moves the ball all the way to the 48-yard line. I do think this, though, Bob, and I'm going to say it plainly and clearly, I think there's some feeling uh, about the alliance and uh, that probably Ohio State might lose some uh, votes because they have not been part of the alliance up to this point in time. Here's a look uh, giving Florida the win and Florida State the loss. Yep. Five teams with one loss. Pearsall had that one on his fingers for a while but never did have possession so it's an incomplete forward pass. And, and really Keith it all depends when you lose. Absolutely. If you lose your last game like Arizona State, and if you win your last game, like Florida has, and who you beat, Florida, Florida lost to Florida State when they, Florida State was number two, and then they beat Florida State when they were number one. They worked themselves back up. I think they got the right team on top. I think, I think you got to give it to Florida. I wouldn't disagree with it. Just hit as he threw, and it bounces away incomplete. It will be then the first national championship for a Florida football team, meaning that there now rests in the state of Florida a total of six banners. It's enough to make South Carolina and Alabama cranky. Six banners in the last 12 or 13 years. Yes, right. Not to mention Georgia and Tennessee. <laughs> and Indiana, and Ohio, and Michigan. And California. Seven and a half minutes to play in the game, and Busby throws down the middle and is picked off. Picked off, yeah. It's Tico Brown. And Tico got he back to a pass at the 49 yard line. So trying to force one down the middle for Peter Warwick. It sails away from him and it is picked off. And that might have been the door slammer. I'm Tiger Woods. I'm Tiger Woods. 
I'm Tiger Woods. I'm Tiger Woods. I am Tiger Woods. I am Tiger Woods. I'm Tiger Woods. I am Tiger Woods. I'm Tiger Woods. Long ago, an inventor came up with the assembly line, allowing a few people to make a lot of something. It was the model for efficiency. At Chili's, we pride ourselves for our inefficiency because we make each of the Big Mouth burgers by hand, grilled one at a time by a person. And when you taste for yourself how good they are, you'll appreciate all the time we've wasted. Chili's Fresh Grilled Big Mouth Burgers, monuments of inefficiency. Well, Visa Gold bought you the clubs and the clothes and three rounds at breathtaking Pebble Beach. The one thing it couldn't buy you was a single decent shot. I quit! Finish without me! I can't. Those were my clubs. Fortunately, it had enough purchasing power for your next set of clubs. Graphite. Visa Gold is everywhere you want to be. Twin brothers separated for 30 years. But it's never too late for revenge. You get to watch me become you. Jack Wagner, back on ABC Sunday. Go back and take a look at that last interception. It comes off the foot of Shea Showers, number two, Tico Brown. It didn't hit the ground. It came off his foot, right? Right. Finally get it over. It's going to be Florida putting the ball in play all the way back on the 30-yard line instead of having it up on the 49 where it was a minute ago. So apparently, um, I don't understand that. I don't either. I don't understand why they put it back. He gave the ball interception, but that's Fred Taylor, and he, he uh, may have one yard out of that carry. Here are the national champions who have uh, come out of this bowl game as champions, and you can see there are a lot of them, much more than you might think. I'm humming along here looking at it, and from 1976, at least I've done all of those. Boy, have we had some great games. Well, I didn't, uh, 73 was, uh, I didn't do that one, but uh, there have been some wonderful football games played here in the Super Bowl. Wow. Uh, it's an inadvertent whistle call. Uh, I guess somebody blew the whistle because they thought the ball had hit the ground, but uh, that's what the officials explained the reason for moving from the Florida State 49 all the way back to the Florida 30. Well, you got to hand it to uh, Danny Werfel. Goes to New York, wins the Heisman Trophy, plays for a national championship, and it looks as though they're going to get it. Win Heisman winners have not always uh, done terribly well, however, in, in, the, in the Sugar Bowl game. Toretta lost here. Uh, Werfel's going to win here. Davey O'Brien was a Heisman winner. Right, let me ask you a question there, Hoss. TCU. The last Heisman Trophy winner to win a national championship. Danny Werfel. <laughs> no, no, you, <laughs> you don't have to look too far now. No. I got up at five this morning. Play Why are you for, asking me? Wait for the other team. CW. Charlie Ward. There you go. Florida's uh, Florida's 45 points, incidentally, scored in a new sugar is a new Sugar Bowl record. The old record was 42 by Georgia Tech back in 1954, when Pepper Rogers quarterbacked the Ramblin' Rex to a 42 to 19 win over West Virginia. We have two dead ball fouls, personal fouls against the defense. It'll be a cumulative total of 30 yards. Oh, my goodness. Here's Glenn Swan. Keith, we were talking about Danny Warfel and all the individual awards, but he knows it's the team that's most important for him. So he's had this hat designed. It's going to be just for his teammates on the floor of the Gators. And when the season's over, when this game is over, they're all going to get it as a personal gift from Danny Warfield. He is team all the way, Keith. 
He's he, a great youngster. Quality kid. He, not only did he win the Heisman, but he won the National Football Foundation and Hall of Fame Madrati Award for scholarship, which goes to the nation's top scholar athlete. So he won the uh, athletic award in the Heisman, and he won the scholar athlete award. And you don't do that very often in the same year. Those two teams averaging 10 yards and uh, 10 penalties per game and about 100 yards coming in. Well, they've gone past that tonight. And uh, Florida State just absorbed two 15-yard penalties for a total of 30. And it's first down for the Gators at the Florida State 42-yard line. They got enough points. All they've got to do now is run out the clock and uh, go have a big party. And I'll bet they will. Bobby Bowden says, I don't like rematches, uh, especially, again, an, an in-state rival. After he, he got a week to celebrate the win over Florida, and he says, uh, when they named the rematch, he says, that's like losing 365 days of bragging and strutting rights uh, because you beat your in-state rival. Yeah, but they're still one and one. Yeah, that's true, but that's, you know the one everybody's going to talk about. Is this one? This team, this team will be back next year. They'll lose Werfel, and uh, Steve will have to develop another quarterback. If they keep Hilliard, if Mike doesn't go out, and it's anticipated that Anthony will, but if Ike doesn't go, then they, they'll be a pretty good football team. Ella Johnson, probably the quarterback. Ball is on the 23. It's a first down. Running the ball. And that's going to be another first down and another penalty flag down around the 13-yard uh, line. The one big advantage that uh, Spurrier and the Gators had coming into this game, Keith, this is only the second year that the Alliance has had a championship game Spurrier and the Gators have played in both of them, and last year the embarrassment of getting beat at the Fiesta Bowl by uh, Tom Osborne in Nebraska had to sting and hurt for quite a long time. Now the first in the time. Well, I think you're just seeing the frustration here. Oh, sure. the Seminoles. Well, as you wind it down and, and looking at what has happened in the postseason play, BYU winds up with the greatest number of wins, a 14-1. Uh, Stanford's uh, big win indicates they'll be around uh, not next year. Washington looks like they'll be pretty good out in the West Coast next year. Uh, it figures that uh, the same people are going to be prominent in the Big Ten next year. And uh, I think these two teams right these here, two teams, teams yeah. They just got talent uh, yep. behind talent. They lose Warwick Dunn. He's a senior. Busby's back. And, uh, and Kendra, he's going to have to play sooner or later. And he'll get his chance this spring to compete for the quarterback job. Spurrier loses his two top quarterbacks, Werfel and Brian Schottenheimer. Let's take a look at now, It was not a good night for him. Only... Uh, 28 yards rushing and a touchdown and one pass reception for 12 yards. Wanted to come out and be with his teammates. This is Taylor. Taylor. Up for Warwick Dunn, uh, the great young man that he is. Uh, five brothers and sisters that he has helped raise since the death of his mother. Comes back here to his home state. Just up the road to Matt Cruz. He came back to Florida. He was, you know, I mean, the Florida State. He was, everybody thought he'd go in the NFL, and he wanted to come back and try to win a championship. He came back hoping uh, to be here for this game, and he made it. Just haven't worked out for him. Third down and goal, the ball at the four-yard line. Harry Jackson. Boom. Close, but not in. 
He's got some leverage when he comes around that corner. But he just misses getting into the end zone. Rodell Anthony comes back into the ball game. Werfel is playing it out. Mobley's the fullback, Jackson the running back. And it's fourth down and goal at the one. Jackson, there it is. This is convincing. After the point, 52-20. I think what we've been talking about, Keith, with five teams having one loss, has been on Steve's mind the last uh, six, seven, eight minutes, and I think, I think the, the last two or three touchdowns were a statement and say, hey, let's beat this team and beat them good so we can get some more votes. Well, they've got a 52-20 lead with 2-12 to play. Everything you need to know about Plymouth Breeze, you already learned in kindergarten. Take turns. Share with others. Follow the rules of safety. And oh yeah, bring something really cool to show and tell. Get $1,000 cash back, or at least the new Plymouth Breeze, for zero down and $249 a month. $499, do it signing. One clever idea after another. That's Plymouth. of a wonder drug but we also help make fabric stronger homes more energy efficient animals healthier and we're helping to lead the way in biotech research so much good we can do for each other oh what a world it can be there in healthcare, chemicals and imaging technologies we cure more headaches than you think we go to the final 212 of the Nokia Sugar Bowl of 1996 Florida now having put its stamp on this one and staked its claim for national championship leading 52 20 the kickoff by Teague Matt getting tired he's worked so hard tonight at the high pop up and fielded at about the 12 by Feaster and he's still pounding with it comes out to about the 35 yard line Sunday night, Lewis and Clark moves to a new time, 7, 6 Central, with a brand new episode, followed by America's Funniest Home Videos, and then Jack Wagner stars in a world premiere movie event, Echo, on the Sunday night movie, the weekend best Sunday on ABC. Dan Kendra, write the name down. He's in there at quarterback now. Florida State. Came out of Pennsylvania. Daddy played for Bobby Bowden in West Virginia. His first pass, he's hit as he throws. It is intercepted. And a penalty flag on the play. Ernie Bandeau. Defensive tackle. So 
Kendra comes in and gets a brutal initiation as he is belted just as he throws. The ball pops up in the air and it is intercepted. It was Dimitri Jackson who hit Kendra. First down, 10, Top 12. of that, the Seminoles get hit with a face mask call. Now, Brian Schottenheimer will get some reps in the ball game. Marty Schottenheimer's son. Steve, why do you think, uh, I mean, uh, Keith, why do you think Steve put on his uh, raincoat? One of the all-time greats leaves the field right there. Yes, he's put numbers in the book at the University of Florida that until they change the game may never be erased. Sports is a tough thing sometimes when you figure the circumstance for young Kendra getting a chance to play in the Sugar Bowl game, even though the cause is lost. And uh, holding through is 96 Connell Spain to take down uh, Schottenheimer on the snap. Obviously, there are penalty flags. And uh, years wise, Steve Spurrier's got on the jacket. Please, he expected it. Now he took it off. He'll go get another bucket and come back at him. <laughs> you know, Steve, an old quarterback, he, he was thinking he put that jacket on for one reason. Of course. He knew the bucket was coming. Now they ought to outsmart him. They ought to go back and get another bucket of ice and ice water and just come back with that one. So the first down now is at the 25-yard line, and it's, uh, it's mop-up time. Eugene McCaslin is the tailback. Young Seminoles out there for the first time, a little short-tempered. So, that play doesn't go anywhere. So it's a matter of letting the clock run and finishing the ball game and going ahead and pass out the trophies. Schottenheimer came down to the transfer down to the University of Florida because Brian says he wants to be a coach. And he's come off the field right now. And he wanted to learn the Spurrier system. And uh, he has. This is Noah Brindisi or Brindice in that quarterback right now. And he's the new one to me. There's a lot of pushing and shoving and whacking and cracking as uh, Eugene McCaslin runs across the field with the football. And now we're inside a minute. And the issue has long since been resolved here. The Florida Gators, number three, have defeated Florida State number one. Number two, Arizona State lost yesterday in the Rose Bowl. And the Florida Gators are now anticipating a national championship their first. The young man in his quarterback right now, number 12, Doug Johnson, is a freshman from Gainesville, Florida. He's on a baseball scholarship right now. But a lot of people think this may be the quarterback right here, next year. He's the air there. your team's performance between this game and the last one? They just beat us in every part of the game. I thought the kicking, the punch that rolled dead on our one, I think they scored off of both of them, I'm not sure, but just kept us in the hole and we couldn't, uh, just couldn't capitalize. They just beat the heck out of us in every part of football. Congratulations on a great season. Let's go to Lynn Swan. Okay, Steve, congratulations. I think well, it's going to be a national championship for you. We've got to let you say how you feel at this uh, moment. Swanee, uh, God has smiled on the Gators, no question about it. 
Texas did what they had to do, and then Ohio State did it. Uh, of course, we hadn't won it yet. we got to wait on the vote tomorrow. Uh, hopefully it'll work out, but, you know, God smiled on us, and Danny Warf was the best. He's the best player to ever played college quarterback, I'll tell you that. You, you, got help, you got help from the right places, but the game plan had to come together, a much more physical ball game by your team and a great well, game plan. Well, we had to get in the shotgun, and Danny's good in there, and, and get the ball off, and then we was able to run a little bit later, but... Danny did it all, and uh, the whole team played super. Proud of everybody. Well, we'll, talk to, we'll talk to Danny. Danny, it was a sensational ball game. Your thoughts, your last game as a Gator. So I have to give all glory and praise to Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. It's been a wonderful uh, career. So many great friends, so many great moments. He's definitely one of the best. Defense, offense, special teams, punt team, everybody played their best tonight, and we're just real excited. You played the whole game in that shotgun. You felt... You look like you've been in it all your life. Hey, you got to do what you got to do, and we had to do that to win. So just thankful, very blessed, and I just share all the credit with the teammates. Danny, we wish you the best. Thanks you've been a great asset to college football, the great inspiration for young people. All right, I'm out of here. I'm done. All right, Swanny, thanks very much. We hope you enjoyed it. The Florida Gators roll tonight to a victory over the Florida State Seminoles. Happy New Year to you. We hope... Life is good to you in 97.